No, uh, yeah. you, you tore, you tore we were, guys, and your straws. You, <laughs> you tore, guys. Go back to your room. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. back to your room. <laughs> Welcome once again, not only once again, but for the 300th time to Chill Filter, the podcast where we drink whiskey so you don't have to. But you probably should, and you probably are. And that's why we like you. Uh, as you can see, we have a guest here today. Before we get to Nick, one of our favorite guests of all time, before we get to anything, uh, I did personally uh, want to say thank you uh, for 300 episodes. I was looking through my calendar uh, from 2018. It was June 25th, 2018, when we had our first weekly episode. And that was, uh, what was it? Um, was I just it looked both? it up. Yeah, was Old, old World uh, Whistle Pig. 12 year and it was good it was good but in the meantime we've drank 298 different uh well more than that but a lot more different whiskeys just wanted to say thank you especially for those who've been here since the beginning uh, also just want to say thank you for those who've joined for a while and those who have joined listened to four episodes and are now hooked uh that's uh that's that's the business this week nothing nothing uh you know how to follow us we are grateful for 300 episodes but more so this week, I am really grateful to have Nick Taylor from Found North on our podcast today. Um, let's let's get it going. So so I guess uh, before I do that, um, we have nine whiskeys lined up in front of us, each one of us today. <laughs> and uh, I am so stoked because today we get uh, not only uh, to try something new, uh, upcoming from Found North, uh, we're also going through the eight batches uh, of their standard batch series. Uh, and we're learning about the story overall from Found North. So um, before I you know, say anything more and keep talking to myself, Nick, how you doing, man? Oh, man, I'm doing well. Thank you guys for having me. I'm I'm yeah. uh, I'm excited to be back. I, I, I always have fun with you guys. So I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty pumped for I'm pretty pumped for for what we got what we got going on today. I, I it's be great. It's, it's bad because like really what I should do is talk about the new whiskey uh -huh. and, and in my head, I'm just like, ah, let's just get this thing over with. So we can get to the, <laughs> you know, can we get to the show here? But no, Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, I I'm really, Hey, I think you guys are the first people to try this, honestly. Ooh. Cool. Yeah. Oh, what is, yeah. what is this? What is, what is, what is, this? What is this? What is this you speak of? Oh, oh, <laughs> um, this is, uh, this is our next whiskey release. Um, and uh, I, I, my my brother and co-founder says I'm not allowed to say the name, so so I'm gonna try <laughs> not to today. Um, but it is, uh, it's the next whiskey in um, what what we've defined as our high altitude collection. Um, so yeah, that that so so we we released uh, we released Peregrine, um, which mm -hmm. Cole is showing right now. We released Peregrine. Um, geez, was that in December? Back in December, and. Uh, Peregrine was like Peregrine. It's funny. My my favorite whiskey is always the most recent one I've made, mm -hmm. um, and and that the team has 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 been working on. Um, but Peregrine was really Peregrine was so cool. It was such a fun whiskey to make. The response was was wild. Um, people people went went pretty nuts for it, which is um, it's just exciting. You know, it's, totally. it's fun to it's fun to make the whiskey. It really is. But the the reaction. The, the people being excited about it um, is is kind of like it makes the whole thing, you know, it makes the whole thing worth it. Um, but but Peregrine was um, Peregrine kind of originated as a as a as a. It came out of an idea that we had around making single barrels. So with Canadian whiskey, basically, like you can't really do single barrels. Not I mean, some people do, but we don't feel like you can do single barrels. Um, at least not in the kind of American whiskey sense, which is mm. like, hey, we laid down this barrel umpteen years ago and here it is, sell it, open it, you know, bottle it, done. Um, and and really the reason is because of just the process of Canadian whiskey, which is to make, for the most part, 100% corn, 100% rye, 100% weed, 100% barley, ferment, distill, age separately, and then blend at the end. Really like the whole point of Canadian whiskey is to give as much freedom and, and creative flexibility to, to the blender. Um, and so 
if you were to just kind of like take a single barrel of, I don't mm. know, corn whiskey, it would be a boring whiskey. Um, it just wouldn't, it wouldn't be really a, a complete whiskey. Um, so what, what, what we thought of was, okay, the cool thing about this is we really have control of, of the, the starting point, right? So we can blend this to a particular starting point and then we can put it into different casks for further maturation and we can sell those as, you know, quote unquote, single barrels. Um, and we, to be honest, when we did this, we like, we weren't, sh- we, we really weren't sure how it was going to, how it was going to turn out. You know, it's like, okay, I think this will work. We give it, we blend it in a way where it has sort of, we, we say it has space to grow into its wood profile, right? So you mm-hmm. intentionally use barrels that haven't seen very much oak or not as much new oak, I should say. Totally. And therefore, you know, they have room to grow into more tannic profile. They have room to, to gain fruit. They have room to g- gain the things we really want from the wood. Um, we did that with our, with our first, we call them seasons of, of single barrels. And it went, it went great. And that really spurred an idea. We said, okay, well, what if, what if we made a blend and we further matured it in specific types of casts that we think really fit for the blend? And then we blend some of those barrels back after that further maturation. So literally mm-hmm. like blend, recask, blend again. Nice. Um, and we laid down um, really the beginning of last year, we laid down um, two different whiskeys in exactly this this kind of format where where we we made the blend we put it into a bit, bunch of different casks and then we further matured it for an extended period of time um the first one that was ready was peregrine which was convenient actually because it's it's the it's kind of the i don't know it's supposed to be the crown jewel of the collection right it's the 20 mm-hmm. year age statement there was a profile this really kind of elevated elegant profile that we were going for um, we aged it in in um, cognac, uh, French limousine, and New American, and then we blended not all of the barrels, but most of the barrels back back together. And that was Peregrine. It was very exciting. And by the um, way, Peregrine reviews are like ridiculous. Um, I've seen <laughs> 20, 20, 25, 30 reviews on Reddit, and all but one have been nine point five and above. <laughs> oh wow, I, it's absurd. I I I. I like we thought it was good, but people's react I mean, people's reaction has just been out of yeah. this world. We're we're really yeah. excited about that. Um, but while we were while we were aging uh uh Peregrine, um, we we actually created the the second sort of member of the high altitude collection. Oh, that's cool. That was that that and and it had a there's real intentionality behind the maturation profile. Peregrine was we were we were putting it in the brandy cask. We we made it have like a lighter profile from a from an initial blend standpoint, and then we put it into the into the um, into the French limousine and the cognac cask. And we we really were hoping that it would kind of expand and knit together in this really kind of uh, a bright fruit fruit forward rich profile, and it it worked. Um, nice. but what we didn't want to do was create like, I don't know, like the junior version of that, right? Not to, mm-hmm. I am not just to be clear. I'm not taking a, a swipe at any company that does yeah, yeah. junior version. Oh, I hear you. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes the juniors totally are better than the seniors. <laughs> that was totally an accident. Uh, <laughs> but no, I, I, the, the idea wasn't, I'll say it this way. The idea wasn't to create Peregrine and then create like its little brother right because like yeah. who would be excited about that right. um as a younger brother myself i i know <laughs> it's, it sucks <laughs> to be second fiddle you know <laughs> um and so when we created this whiskey what we really wanted to do was like if if uh if peregrine is kind of like the really elevated version of the high altitude collection um the uh the the this next whiskey, God, this is going to be really hard not to say the name. It this will. next whiskey <laughs> was supposed to get kind of more into the the depths of flavor, I should say. Ah, um, the low altitude is, collection. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> it's kind of um, you know, if 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 it's if there's a if 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 Peregrine is an angel, you know, this mm. guy's supposed to be a bit of a devil. Um, <laughs> and of course, of course, we put it in. Um, 
in sherry casks. Uh, nice. So this is this was a um, a, a sherry cask maturation. Um, we did actually we did actually use a little cognac um and uh and new american oak the new american oak is is just necessary for there are certain components there are certain flavors that you just only get from new american oak and they give mm. your whiskey a through line um mm. and it makes it really much easier to kind of construct whatever the rest of the direction whatever the rest of the song is to build it around that the the new american oak gives you the um, the ability to do that. Um, so that's that guys is what is in your glass. Um, oh, should come out in a, I, I, I know this being real, this podcast being released, um, in a couple of days. So we're probably, when people are listening to this, we'll probably be a couple of weeks away from, um, from this Ooh. sucker coming out. Yeah. Ooh, like, yeah. like, uh, being announced or from like hitting the stores, no, I'll be at, like hitting stores. Ooh, yeah. This will dang. hit stores in April. Yeah. Oh, that's dang. killer. Oh dang. man awesome um yeah i you know i i did an entry buzz which is you know the way we we you know drink something beforehand but yeah i entry buzzed on peregrine <laughs> oh nice I should have done that. <laughs> so, it, you know it's going to be a good show when you entry buzz on peregrine but i, I got some yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 um but okay so I'm getting some serious age on this and, and a little bit of, of cherry, a little bit of a medicinal cherry kind of um, not too medicinal though, but uh, I do get a lot of Oak here. I would get, I would have, well, I would guess that, that this has this similar kind of age on it as, as Peregrine. No comment. I, um... <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I said, no comment. I'm also uh -huh. forbidden to give any ages out. Um, yeah. Or Zach, proof. Zach, yeah. My, my brother is really fun. Just, I don't want anybody to think like my brother is the party. Maker. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> That's funny. I, I'm getting um, a really nice fruity nose. Um, but like you said, it's more depthful. I am um, getting like a little bit of like... I wouldn't call this baking apples or, or fresh apples as much as I would call it stewed apples uh, with a little bit of like orange mm. peel in there. Um, totally get the orange peel. It's got, it's got the caramel, but it's okay. not the dominant note. Um, it's very much not the dominant note. So I sipped already and oh man, uh, caramel, on the palate, absolutely. Stewed fruits on the palate, absolutely. Um, nothing really dominates heavily, though. I, I wouldn't say that there's one primary note. It's absolutely I the light and the dark against Peregrine. I absolutely see what you mean. Where and we're going. this Good. is so much more up my alley. Uh, and I batch, batch eight was my favorite until now because of that little bit of um, of red fruits and and tobacco maybe just a little bit of funk and this has that deeper darker essence <laughs> yes oh man and this uh, does sure caster sorry go ahead yeah this yeah. does have a little bit of that tobacco on it too and everything oh good totally. note and mm -hmm. um uh kind of a double oak can like uh it is it is oaky in the sense that like i i i'm not a huge fan of double oak things normally because there's something about them that just seems like fake but this seems like the amount of oak from a double oak but like done correctly <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate that no i i think the i i have to tell you um this was the most difficult blend we've ever done uh um, really? sherry sherry and i i understand why like particularly in in scotch people like love sherry right scotch people go nuts over sherry and i i partly think that's just a malt thing i think mm -hmm. malt handles sherry very well um yeah. if it's done if it's done right uh particularly like big fatty distillate you think mccallan you think mm -hmm. but, but more so for me i think like glendronic right glendronic mm, totally. my favorite sherry scotch same uh because it's just a fat distillate um you yeah. go there and it's like the stills are fat everything about it's like it's got <laughs> heat on the phone um nice but but sherry tends to i i think a lot of times you you'll see people 
in American whiskey, at least pulling away from, from sherry casks a little bit because it can be domineering, right? Like it really can be, yeah. um, it, it, it throws a lot of flavor and a lot of flavor in a lot of different directions and mm -hmm. just getting this thing to just like the casks when, when we, when we made Peregrine, each cask was delightful. You know, it was like, oh, this is fun. And this is fun. And this is fun. <laughs> we put them all together. It's super fun. You know, it's like, it was the easiest. I think Peregrine was one of the easiest whiskeys we've ever nice. made. Uh, yeah. This one was like a wrestling match with each cask, you know, and getting them to, getting them to knit together and integrate in a way that, that, that really worked and got the, um, got kind of the best out of those notes you're talking about. Those like, the, the stewed fruits, the tobacco for sure. I got the tobacco. Um, getting enough of that citrus note in, which actually, honestly, I think came from the cognac barrel. Um, like, I, I think getting those things to all work together without throwing elbows, it just, mm -hmm. it took, it took so many test blends. I, I and, and I was, <laughs> I was just, I was banging my head against the wall. Sammy, honestly, Sammy, who's who's our um we don't have a good we we gotta work on Sammy's title. He's our director <laughs> of whiskey innovation. He's your Sammy. But really yeah. he's my Sammy. Um yeah. and Sammy, Sammy has the best palate of anybody I know and nice. anybody I've ever met in the industry. Um and and Sammy, this was this was uh, I mean, largely Sammy figured out the final formula. We were we were honing in on it for a while and we just couldn't get over the hump. And finally, one morning he called me and he was like, try this. And I could just tell by how he said it that mm -hmm. he thought he had it, you know, but he didn't want to like tip the hand that we had gotten there. And and I, I, I was like, all right, I'm going to mix it up. I'll call you back. Um, but we did not use all of the cat. We actually used about half of the casks, which oh, is wow. just ridiculous, right? Um, you're like, oh, great. Now what do we do with these other half? Actually, I already know what we're going to do with the other half, but that's going to say, there. I bet you know. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But but we only used we did not use all the casks and it was a it was um it was a real pain in the ass to get this thing right but in the end it's just this this sucker is is like a storm I I just I think when you drink this it 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 doesn't it really does the the counterpoint of Peregrine Peregrine is such a clean easy whiskey like it's yeah. complex and and it's nice but it's such a it's such a a lovely direction whereas this one is like it drops in like a like a surfer on a hundred foot wave you're just mm -hmm. like oh i'm in it yeah i um and that, uh, that intensity just uh continues the the whole time it stays very even there's no part that drops out in the middle or anything it's uh it, it all is very uh each phase of the sip is very complimentary <laughs> how much of this would you say was sherry finished Think about half of it. Um, That's impressive. I like to hear that a lot. Yeah, because a lot. It's like IPAs. Sometimes it's like, hey, just crank up the hops. It's like you said with certain single malts. It's like crank up the sherry and it all evens out. But this is uh, well balanced. I might not even guess this is sherry finish, which is a good thing because which is sometimes you can be like yeah. sherry bomb. Enough said. Yeah. Uh, which is good. Don't get me That's wrong. Exactly and um, right. Glendronic is my favorite. And like Abelor and like some of those big yep. sherry bombs are amazing to me. But I really dig this because batch eight, uh, when we had, when we last time we had you on, batch eight had um, that Madeira finish. Yes. And it gave it a little bit of a sour, uh, which is like yes. what I loved about it um, because it was more than just. Um, more than just fruity, more than just like those those standard old age, but not too age notes, which is another compliment I have about this uh, whiskey we're drinking right now is that it is not overaged. Um, and you can even overage something in like 13, 14 years sometimes. And it's just like too much oak, totally. too much oak. Um, but something, you know, and that's one of the things I noticed about Peregrine too. And Peregrine being 20 years, it's like, yeah, you kind of expect things to get too oaky a little bit. Uh, but I applaud you and Sammy and and Zach, your brother, because and whoever else like Phil is getting involved. Yeah, Phil. Like, oh, yeah. Um, Phil's all over this one. Because one, it's not over sherried. Two, it's not over oaked. And then three, it's got a really nice depth to it. 
uh and the age is beautiful without like i said getting over oaked um uh, but there is almost that sherry can bring a little bit of um not as sour as batch eight but it brings a little bit of that like mean. sour fruitiness yeah. like sour grapes or something like that it's it's amazing it, it it's it's a little bit of acid right and that's mm -hmm. that actually is why the problem okay the problem with acid mm -hmm. is acid if you get the wrong balance of acid and bitter mm -hmm. they 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 create just a uh they create a cacophony they're they're loud they can get really uh -huh. loud particularly in the back end of the whiskey um and and that the 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 struggle with this whiskey was we could use we could just use all the new wood right and it mm -hmm. just washed out the the sherry and you lost all the acid and then you 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 had no problems with earthiness or at but you also lost half of the flavor you you lost what totally. made it good and so what we ended up doing was reducing a lot of the new wood components we were using and mm -hmm. then just figuring out how to get we didn't use all of each cask of sherry that's actually why this became such a pain in the ass was mm -hmm. because we couldn't just use all of this and all of this and all of this and it it, it was it was also it was super interesting talking to um we talked to a few distillers about this process because this was one of the hardest whiskeys for us to make mm -hmm. um and one of the things we we were talking with one of the distillers about was the sherry cast did not age in a consistent way with each other mm -hmm. they were each their own individual whiskey interesting uh, so so you know you, you yeah, that's fine if you're doing like a four barrel whiskey, but when you start doing more and more barrels, you can't be, you need them to age consistently. You can't be totally. like figuring out how much of each little barrel to you, you know, it's a, it's a nightmare. And we were talking to a distiller and, and I won't say who it was because, because some people don't like, like mm. some people don't like, uh, um, uh, sherry seasoned barrels, right? Mm -hmm. You're talking about like, and so what's the difference between sherry aged and, and sherry seasoned? Sherry seasoned is when you actually put sherry in there, you rotate the barrel, you get the sherry to basically integrate with oh, the wood and dump the sherry out. That's sherry seasoned, right? Where sherry mm. aged is like you take, you take it's it's the regular process of making sherry. I yeah. won't dig too deep into it. And and we were talking to said distiller, and said distiller said to us, like, Oh yeah, no wonder your whiskeys went completely haywire. You're using actually sherry aged, not sherry. Oh wow! Seasoned. Why do you think we all use sherry seasoned? It's huh. much, much more consistent. I had no idea, and I, I didn't either. I always <laughs> and I've always like thumbed my nose at sherry seasoned because I'm like, why don't you just use real sherry casks? Now yeah. I know because if you're doing anything at scale, integrating like I'm, I, you know. For us trying to get six casts to work, imagine trying to get like 60 casts to work. Totally. They're all going in completely different directions. It would be, it would take all year to just get the sherry piece of it right. Mm -hmm. um, and so for us, it was like getting these things to mix and match so that we were getting the right amount of acid. So you get that, that, that twang, that little bit of like citrus, which totally. of course is balanced out by the sweetness of the sherry. Mm -hmm. And by the sweetness of the new oak, and by the fruit notes of the cognac, but getting them to all work so that it wasn't getting kind of a bitter finish that was getting exacerbated exacerbated by the acid was mm. incredibly difficult. Incredibly yeah. difficult. But I, I'm like, and it was such a funny conversation with my brother as we were going through this process because he's like, "Hey, where are you guys?" And I'm like, "I think we have a." The way we always say it is, um. We will never bottle anything for us that isn't a nine or better. And we think mm -hmm. like nine is it's amazing. Nine is like, we think nine's amazing. Now, the trick part of the reason for that is when things marry, they don't always do what you expect them to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes they get a little better, sometimes they get a little worse. And there's a little bit of this like unknown factor. There's, it's not just, okay, we got the formula and now we know exactly mm -hmm. what the whiskey's going to do. There's still, right months more process of getting this right so that it tastes good in the bottle and what ends up in the bottle isn't exactly the same thing as what your what your test blend is it doesn't yeah. it doesn't work in a one-to-one -one way like that yeah. so basically we're always like it's got to be a nine or better based on our scale and and he's like all right where are you guys and i'm like right now our best blend of this of this wow i almost said the name um is, <laughs> is right i was like right now the best is like an eight 
And he's like, Oh God. I'm like, yeah, I know we've been, we're, we're get, but we're getting closer, you know, next, like three days later. Yeah. We're, we're at an eight, we're stuck at an 8.5. We're stuck at an 8.5. And he's like, Oh, okay. And finally we got this thing to a nine and I was like, all right, we, I think we can bottle something here. You know, I wasn't even, and then Sammy got locked in on this blend and I was like, all right, this is at least a nine, but I think when it gets in the, in the vat, it's going to get, it's going to end up getting more integrated because mm-hmm. yeah, it was tasting a little sort of jagged. I was like, I think this thing is going to get integrated and you guys have a, this was the first acceptable, like the first week that you put something in a vat, it tastes oh, nice. weird. Um, mm-hmm. It tastes really weird. About two weeks in, it starts to taste like it's really going to taste. That's what you guys have. I've tasted nice. it after three. It's been in the vat now for a little over three weeks wow. and it's getting more and more and more integrated. Nice. Uh, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm really, it's, it's ready. We're, we're going to bottle this up in the next week or so. It It's, it's absolutely ready at this point. Nice. And it's a, uh, I'm so excited uh, about this. Whiskey. Great. Yeah. I remember uh, you were saying uh, batch eight was notoriously difficult for you guys to blend as well. And is that just the Sourdough. same kind of thing? Madeira, mm. Sherry, like the same kind of things were happening. That, that sour note that you like mm. getting, getting those notes. I think um, the really hard thing is there are certain flavors where it's like, like when we get into batch five, batch five was was definitely the easiest whiskey we've ever made. Nice. I, I, it's, it was easier than Peregrine. It was so easy. It was silly. And it's that's delicious. One. Yes. And that's why nice. it has no, all the things that went into it have no rough edges, right? Uh. And it's like a lot of the interesting flavors that we like a lot of times people will, when they're making whiskey, will go, okay, I have this interesting flavor and it comes with this, maybe this, what some people might call flaw or, you know, I see this with super aged bourbon all the time, which is like, mm-hmm. you get super aged bourbon and that means you're going to get these really lovely fruit notes because it's finally going to have enough oxygen and enough time in the barrel to produce fruit. But the the penalty is that oaky bitterness, right? It's too mm-hmm, much tannic right. acid. And you're just, that's just the deal. Yeah. Um, we we just have no tolerance for that. So we want mm-hmm. the really interesting flavor, but we also want to make it in a way where the interesting flavor doesn't come with baggage. You know, it doesn't come with some some problem, some hitch that we that we just accept is there as a consequence of the good. We yeah. we want to we want to meld it together together. So we're getting the best of what what what's interesting about Madeira, which is that sour fruit note, but we want to complement it enough where you're retaining that sour that that sour note in a way that's integrated and doesn't come with acid with too much yeah. acid. Mm-hmm. And that's hard. That that piece of it's really hard. particularly at proof. You can yeah. if you water stuff down, you can you can cover a lot of sense. Water mm-hmm. covers a ton of sense. Like mm-hmm. we'll we'll make something and we'll sit there and we'll be like this God, this tastes great, but it's it's hot or it's this, and we'll water it down like ten proof points, and you're just sitting there. You're like, how much do we care about Castro? <laughs> <You're like, laughs> I actually tried with this batch, and I love it neat. I actually love it more with a tiny few more drops. With water. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Actually, oh hold on, my what my my water dropper. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> no, yeah, it was. Uh, it brought out a little more of that. Uh, it, it was brighter um, in the depth of it. Totally. Like it was like uh, more fruity, more. And I think that orange peel comes with a little bit of orange mm. juice too, uh, in a good way, in a really good way. Um, but it brightened it in a really nice way. Uh, but like I said, amazing neat. But that's the beauty is you get to drink it however you want. <laughs> I get more of the a few drops of water that that. Um... There's a uh, a wafer note, like in a candy bar. You know, candy bars will mm-hmm. have that, that, like the way it'll be chocolate caramel and then the wafer or yeah. the, you know, the whatever. Yeah. I, that that to me comes comes pouring out of the glass when you give it a little water. And that, right. by the way, is like that and cinnamon. Mm-hmm. How can you not love, how can, how can people not love whiskey? Right. The primary flavors of whiskey are like cinnamon, like caramel, caramel vanilla. Yeah, yeah. It's like 
everything that everyone loves in life. Oh, yeah. Is in Butter a glass. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's like, good. what are we doing yeah. here? Mm -hmm. Like um, pureed fruits if it's really, you know, oh, exotic. Totally. <laughs> yeah, yeah. While we're yeah. talking about sherry and stuff, I can quote you from the last time you were on the show here. You said, don't don't get me started on sherry casks. The casks themselves, <laughs> I think it was about. You were like, there's a lot of bullshit PX out there. There's a lot of bullshit sherry. Do you want to? These are the questions that's going to make know. this episode be like three I hours know. long. But uh, So was this PX? Point. This was, we used, we did use some PX. We used a bunch of, we actually used some American oak sherry okay. and some French limousine sherry. Ooh, yeah. We used we used a bunch of different actual types of sherry within. That might have been why they all the diverted. <laughs> which is also part of the reason why they all went fucking yeah. haywire. Sorry, yeah. you can bleep me. <laughs> ah. <laughs> oh no, say whatever you want. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah say, say whatever yeah. you want, even the name of the blend. It's all good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, I, 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 there's the funny thing that happens for me, the deeper I go down the rabbit. I, cause I still like, we say this all the time. Found North is found. The whole point of found North is that like, we're on a journey, right. And we'll yeah. get into that as we go, as we go through these blends and it's, it'll be fun to, to sort of, because these blends actually, these different batches really represent in some ways, the discoveries that we've made throughout this process. Like totally. we didn't get into this feeling like we knew all the answers, right? There, there's been a lot of, there's constant learning and it's been really interesting going, going from consumer of whiskey to working in retail and like being somebody who's hearing the stories from the distillers and, mm -hmm. and like, and, and sort of having my opinion to, representing other brands right like as a brand ambassador and then you kind of get the real story to to making our own whiskey and that's been our that's been my personal progression through this process and what's crazy is like as a consumer i was like you know bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and just excited about whiskey right and then as a buyer i became the most skeptical asshole ever you know i was just like i was like well why would you use sherry season casks you know and i was like i was, I was just so i wanted everything to be i had this like i really went through this like purity phase where i was like mm -hmm. i want everything to be in its purest form and and mm -hmm. i had opinions about what that meant and then as i've gotten deeper into it there are things where I've actually become even more staunch. Like I, mm -hmm. I've become more of a stickler for certain things, but there are other things where I'm like, Oh crap. Now I get why they do this or that, mm -hmm. or like I used to be really impressed by, and this is ironic because we make this style of whiskey, but I used to be blown away by special editions. You know, four roses come out with the small batch. Totally. Edition. I'd be like, this whiskey is just out of control. Good. And, mm -hmm. you know, somebody would come out with, uh, you know, uh, there have been a few Old Forester birthday bourbons where I've just been mm -hmm. like, yeah, you know, Michter's 20, the 2013 Michter's, Michter's 20 was, is maybe one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. Mm -hmm. And now I'm actually like super impressed by Four Roses small batch, just like the mm -hmm. regular, you know, and like, Appreciate. because I really appreciate the the how they're able to make this thing taste good and consistent exactly. every time over and over again yeah. mm -hmm. at the scale is yeah. unreal. Yeah. I have a total new appreciation for for some of these different pieces of the business that when I was younger in the industry I really didn't appreciate and probably was a little too full of myself um <laughs> and i i was i i i was you know the the knowing enough to be dangerous i knew right. enough to be dangerous to myself like i yeah. i was like you know oh i know oh i know the truth and i know the real and then it was like i was like okay now i now i start to understand it i what i wish had been done when i was earlier on in the industry was like I wish somebody would just have told me the sherry season thing. You mm. know what I mean? Like, don't try That's to hide it because you, you know, just tell me why you're doing it. If somebody yeah. had said like, yeah, yeah, we do it this way. We get a much more consistent product. This is what we're trying to do. Like, and, and then stand behind it. You know what I mean? And just be like, mm -hmm. no, this is the process and this is why it works. 
I, I, I always bought into that. What would happen for me is a lot of times distilleries or brands are doing something and they don't stand by it because they mm-hmm. know that there's a perception about it. So they're like, oh, no, 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 we can't, we can't talk about that, that part of the process. It's like, it's like the industry using euphemisms for blending. You know, it's like, oh, mm-hmm. we, we batch or we, we marry or we, it's mm-hmm. like, oh, just shut up and say blend. Like you yeah, blend right. it and you blend it really well. And yeah. That's how you get it to be consistent. And that's incredibly mm-hmm. impressive. I totally yeah. appreciate it now, you know? So anyway, that's my, that's, that's me getting on my, my, my uh, soapbox to, to, to educate my younger self. You Good. know what I mean? Nice. <laughs> I do have up a bit. one more question about this, about this new yeah. batch. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. If I remember correctly, when you were blending Peregrine, there was one barrel out of 14. That was a cognac finished barrel that got set to the side. That is not the barrel. Okay. All right. <laughs> that is not the barrel. No, this is a great question. No, that is not the barrel. Um, it might be the. I don't know. I have to ask Sammy because he's going to say, that. "Yeah, it, what's up with we that dumped, funky one?" We we dumped that. We dumped that. What did we do with the actual wood itself? I don't remember. It's not, but it wasn't the barrel. Okay. It wasn't the barrel. We we uh, no. What what was interesting? What's interesting about this? The one interesting aspect about this process is. We're very opportunistic when we buy wood. Um, so not everything is aged, like not 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 all of the liquid after we blended it went into wood at exactly the same time, right? It's like, oh, some of it went in and then it took us a month to get another barrel that we really wanted, and the rest went, went into that barrel, right? And it's like, so some of it, some of it has been further matured for like eight months. 10 months and 14 months or something like that. I have to actually go look at what the, what the final aging was for everything, but it's, but it's, yeah, it's a, it's a ridiculous process. It's expensive. I don't know why we do it other than it makes a delightful <laughs> whiskey. So if you're, know. if you're coming across a barrel and you're like, this is ready right now. And it's just this barrel, like these other ones aren't ready and maybe they'll be ready in a few days, a few months, a few, whatever. What do you like? I assume you tank that barrel. Tank it. Do you have a tank it. like a fifty-five gallon tank? Yes. Okay. You cool. That's that big, yeah. We we're we are just littered with with drums. We have mm-hmm. so many drums because that that's and that's um before before we we uh, before we started recording, we talked a little bit about this for a minute here. But mm-hmm. but one of the one of the tricky things for us is um we sample the barrels a lot. We sample the barrel. We sample all our single barrels a lot. We sample mm-hmm. our components that we've recast a lot, um, and we sample anything in our high altitude collection. We're sampling very frequently, which is fine when you're small, right? But obviously, as a business, <laughs> we're trying to grow, totally. <laughs> right? And and we're we're and on top of it, like not just from a business standpoint, but um, you know, we were super excited with the response to Peregrine, but we were actually bummed with how many people didn't get bottles totally. uh, who really wanted it, mm-hmm. you know nothing makes me i actually it actually like hurts when people email me and are like i've managed to get every single found north and i missed out <laughs> on Peregrine. you know is yeah. there any way you can get me one and it's like Bro. no i can't and mm-hmm. it's awful right because i'm just like so the point was not to make too few bottles and as mm-hmm. the recognition of found north grows we we want the size of the the whiskeys the the size of the the blends to grow um, mm-hmm. but the problem with that is the, the bigger, the blends, the more barrels we need to manage, which means yeah. the more we need to taste, which wow. is, which is, you know, if you think about it, it's like, all right, if we had to, if we sample 365 barrels, um, this year we'll probably sample, I think we'll probably have 350 barrels, not that we own 350 barrels that we need to like actively be tasting. We own wow. way more barrels than that now at this point, mm-hmm. but they're probably over the course of this year, there'll be 350 barrels that we have to manage. Um, and on average, we'll taste each of those barrels five to 10 times before they're put before they're wow. like pulled. That's not, that's, that doesn't include actually blending them. Now mm-hmm. we have a five person team um, mm-hmm. and really like three of us do quality control. So that means mm-hmm. three of us need to taste 350 barrels 
call it, you know, say it's it's general generous, and we say it five times, like yep. you're still talking about seventeen, eighteen hundred mm-hmm. samplings. Um, yeah. Think about how much like just liquid that is. I I I'm actually. I almost never sit down and just sip something anymore. You know, like, mm-hmm. oh wow, I wonder how this is coming. Like sip. I'm like, no, no, no. I need to I need to preserve this sip because I totally. only get so many of them and I yeah. have so much things to cover. <laughs> uh, right. So yeah, we're we're super neurotic about it. And it's and that's one of the hardest pieces, is it's like, you know, when you're aging a barrel, there's only two options, pull it or leave it. You can't yep. wind the clock back, right? So yeah. You're either guessing like, is it at its best now, or is it about to be at its best, or is it far away from its best? Um, and so for us, one of the hardest things is like, when it hits a certain point, you know, you sit there and you're like, is this getting better, or should we, or or is this going to get worse? And and some things turn corners quickly, right? Um, mm-hmm. So one of the big things we've done, we've gotten better at, is we've gotten sort of better at this in general, is like creating a liquid library saving all the samples that we pull and then going back and then you have a, a progression you can look at this where was this two months in aging four months five months five months and two weeks right six months like and you can see okay this thing really this part of the flavor has gone like this and we really think it's going to keep going down you know but maybe this part of the flavor just keeps going up and mm. <laughs> are we happy do we want to so many variables that sounds so <laughs> <Yeah>. hard <laughs> it's really hard and and the crazy thing here is the crazy thing is like if i can only taste five or six things in a day realistically Mm -hmm. um both from a health standpoint and from a from a just just you know palate fatigue standpoint totally i i can't spend i can't go back in and dig into the liquid library with every single barrel i can't just sit here and be like oh you know what this one barrel out of 350 I'm going to go taste five different samples of it. Like it's just right now, you know what I mean? And I've already mm-hmm. five times. I, I can't yeah. do that. And so the crazy thing is, and one of the really hard things is um, getting, getting your language down with yourself, right? Totally. Like taking notes that you understand. Right. I know what this means, right? Like, um, and so one of the coolest things for us, for, for me, that's really, sort of developed how I think about whiskey over the last year or so is I've really started to break down my my whiskey into four quadrants. The landing, the, how it hits your palate, I think is the first quadrant. The mid palate, I really break into like the front mid palate, which is the second quadrant and the back of the mid palate, which is the third quadrant. Mm-hmm. And then the finish being really the fourth quadrant. And it's a, it's an, it's, it's a really good way to not just keep track of the flavors but where they are on the palate and how they're behaving, right? And so when we're when Sammy and I and and Phil now are talking about a blend or a whiskey, we'll sit there and go, yeah, this thing really like this gets hot in the third quadrant, you know, mm-hmm. like really it's great, but it's hot in the third quadrant. And and you sit there and you're like, okay, what the hell does that mean? Now I know it. You know, it's it's much more precise than being like, oh, at somewhere on the spectrum of this whiskey it got a little hot or it got a little yeah. bitter got a little bit mm-hmm. right and so just getting the language right so that i can taste this once look yeah. at the notes in the liquid library and go i don't actually need to drink that to know what it tastes like that that's yeah. that's been the the i think the coolest part and it makes you better at cool. by the way nice. oh i believe it's it like, it's like it's like weight training for for the big for the big game you know it's like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, well, Brian, it might, be, it might be time to oh, get into ahead. this. Yeah, get into this batch one through eight here. Yeah, let's do it. I'm thinking well, okay. maybe should we let's... say what we think of this one as like an overall? I feel like we should. Oh yeah. Uh, so um, for me, I, I'm I have half my sample bottle left. I'm gonna pit it against eight sometime in the future. But mm. to me, this is above Peregrine. Uh, and I did sit Peregrine just after that, and. Um, Peregrine's got the creaminess. Peregrine's got got the bright kind of almost tropical fruit. I was getting like a cantaloupe um, uh, mango kind of, uh, but this is 
way more oak. Uh, you can really get wood sugar presence there. And mm. the sherry. Oh, God, I just love sherry. Uh, that tobacco-ness and everything. So, yeah, this is so much more up my alley. Whatever I gave Peregrine, um, I, I tack on a couple more points. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I Okay. So I need to try Batch 8 again, too. But I was afraid to like try it without. But from recollection um last time i said that if i've had three before this one i've had batch seven batch eight and peregrine uh i remember last time i said in that in the order i preferred uh or i liked batch seven and then peregrine and then batch eight this is better than mm -hmm. batch seven it i don't know if it's better than batch eight but eight, batch eight was like incredible like and then some but it's very close I think it's actually like right about where Peregrine is in my scale, but I'll have to retry them all. Uh, but b that being said, I think I gave it like a nine. You remember, Nick, what did I give it last time? Or like, you a, gave it, I think, did you give, you gave it a 9.4? Yeah. Yeah. And then I think I gave this, the, I think I gave Peregrine like a 9.5 or something like that. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember, like but that. it's up there and it's like very good. I, what I love about this is that um, the brightness, the fruitiness, even more so, uh to me than peregrine um on the front is the depth of fruitiness as well like the depth of that stewed fruit that like orange yeah. peel um it's got it all like i said it is not over oaked which most of our listeners know that i am very sensitive to oak uh and mm. this is very beautiful um so yeah i i i'd say i gotta try batch eight again here let's try right now <laughs> he's got a yeah, he's got a port he's got out batch already. Eight right there. <laughs> oh man. Batch eight still wins. Oh, but oh this is second place or tied for second place with Peregrine. It's for me. Very cool. Very I, cool. I, mm -hmm. So so what 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 I'm really excited about this whiskey, and then let's let's move on. And I, I'm yeah. I'm pumped you guys like this whiskey. But what I'm excited about with this whiskey is the point of the high altitude collection wasn't to have like, you know the the ace king queen jack you know what i mean right. the point is not a like, higher oh i i didn't you know i didn't get my i didn't get peregrine but i managed to get That's whiskey point. to be named right mm -hmm. um i i don't want it that I, we really don't want it to be that we we want people to go oh i love peregrine but actually i prefer other whiskey in the club yeah. you know what i mean and that 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 is they're not supposed to, they're, they're really supposed to be juxt, juxtaposed, right? Like yeah. the idea is to actually give them a, a degree of juxtaposition. And, and I think, I think it turned out that way. I'm pretty excited about it. And that's the beauty is really that, you know, we're going to find out in a moment just how much this is the case, but batch seven, batch eight and Peregrine and this one are all very different in different ways, like in beautiful ways, which oh. makes it like you were saying, it's, it's not like this is like, you know george t stag 2016 versus 2014 this is right, right like right. they are all blended differently they're all finished differently Component. and they're all intended to be different and that's the beauty is like in a way i would say like george t stag might be going for maybe not super consistency but at least it's the same mash bill every degree. time it's towards yeah. the same yeah. age this is going to be always different which is kind of fun and the the, the hard thing is that you know at least you have the mentality of like i'm not gonna always outdo myself um but i'm going to put out nine plus bangers every time and uh, yeah so <laughs> and that's the beauty Absolutely. is like hey they're all different but then the hard thing is you can't recreate something either but that's the beauty Just like that's four all and six yeah <laughs> that's yeah that's that is the that is the hard part and that is um it is you, you. You've nailed it. It's a blessing and a curse, right? Because mm -hmm. I don't have to recreate it. I'm not handcuffed by we need to recreate this whiskey. Um, but at the same time, it's like we have to create something fresh. We have to create mm -hmm. something fresh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, that's hard. But, but, As a, like that's an artist issue. That's like don't totally. get like artist block. I'm sure. But we're getting better, which that's is good. like we, we're we're getting we're getting at the same time that it's in certain ways it's getting harder in certain ways it's getting a lot easier we get That's we cool. get to we get somewhere pretty good pretty fast when we made let's jump into one because i want to talk to you yeah, about hold on, hold on. Actually, tell first, us your story 
No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, let's yeah, yeah. It, let's send it to break first. I need oh, a yeah. minute. Send it to break. We'll cut and then we'll come back and, and okay, okay, okay. Today. We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're back. And uh, a nice break. We went for a walk. We all went for a walk. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we're back. And we are, we're kicking it off. It's story time. So Nick's going to give us the uh, the background of Found North from day one, or at least batch one. So. Batch one. <laughs> from batch one. And then let yeah. us know when no. to drink, Nick. So we'll drink when you tell us to. I'm, oh man, I'm so excited you, you, you're you going to dive in here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're like, what the this hell is, good. is this? This is like, oh. uh, um, you know, those, okay, this is going to sound so dumb and I'm going to interrupt a ton right now, but this smells no. like, um, my daughter recently bought some, um, a some candy whiskey. necklace and it's, it's more fruity than like Smarties. Smarties aren't even fruity. So no, it's got no. some like it's got a little fruity. This smells like a little bit like my daughter's uh, candy necklace, like hard candy, delicious smell. That's awesome. And fruity. That's awesome. Yeah. So so good. I'm glad that comes through because we were trying for that to come through. Um, <laughs> the no, old so, necklace so, smell. <laughs> the, the old necklace smell. Yeah. No, the fruity smell. But mm. candy necklace is is something I haven't thought of in a long time. That'll be it's batch ten. Callback. Yeah. Yeah. That'll be batch <laughs> ten. We'll just call Perfect. it the candy necklace. Yeah. No, so so um, so you know, Found North started with the intention of being a predominantly a rye company. We wanted to oh, make, cool. we wanted to make rye, um, and you know, I I said this uh, uh before when we were in the backstage before we jumped on, but I'll say it mm -hmm. again, um, you know, people often tell the story of their brand as if it was very linear, and I I'm I'm. I'm revisionist with this sometimes, particularly in short <laughs> format. It's like, oh, we wanted to, you know, it's like, what's the mission of Found North? And it's like, we want to make blended Canadian whiskey that's really like, you know, changing the way people perceive Canadian whiskey, mm -hmm. right? It's like, boom. That's not how we started. Like that's that funny. was when I say it, right? It's like if I told you that was exactly the idea, like sure, that was a piece of what we were trying to do. But really, when we we started Found North, it was pretty, it was pretty simple which was we 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 saw a lot of the best aged rye was coming from canada in american yeah. products right mm -hmm. like Amer and labeled american rye it's like hey this yeah. is an american rye and and we knew that we knew that the 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 serious whiskey enthusiasts and hobbyists knew that it was canadian and we knew that they didn't care mm -hmm. that they were actually more just annoyed that 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 people were one premiumizing it and two you know premiumizing it as if it were american rye right yeah, yeah. like and you know the 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 scarcity of actual 10 15 20 year rye like 10 15 years ago there was so little of it that like totally it, it you know and so a lot of companies were tur were turning to canada which only had this rye because of the way Canadian is made, right? Totally. This one hundred percent rye only existed not because they were releasing rye of this style up in Canada. It was just a component, and what American brands were doing was effectively just buying it as if those distilleries were MGP, right? Just treating mm -hmm. it like MGP, going up there, buying the rye, bottling it, selling it, mm -hmm. um, and and we we sort of we looked at this and said, okay, we have two problems with this. One. Canadian whiskey is designed to be blended. Uh, mm -hmm. And so don't shy away from it. And two, uh, just be upfront about the fact that it's from Canada and that it's yeah. sourced from Canada, right? You didn't, this isn't grandma's recipe that you dug up under the, you know, under the porch, right? Like this is, we source this, it's good liquid, it's from Canada. Uh, yeah. and, and so that's how we came up with the name found north right yeah like, <laughs> legitimately we were just like yo we are gonna hit you over the head with mm -hmm. the fact that we sourced this rye from canada mm -hmm. uh and and but style from a stylistic standpoint um 
what we loved about Canadian whiskey, actually, and the Canadian distillate that we were looking at was uh, it wasn't bombarded with new oak. Um, yeah. They don't have to put everything in new oak. Mm -hmm. In fact, a lot of it was in different species of oak, different types of aging regimens. And a lot of time, most of the time was in used oak. Um, mm -hmm. And rye does wonderful things if it's aged long enough in non new wood. Mm -hmm. um, there are, it, it, the, the misconception with whiskey, one of the many, many misconceptions with whiskey, but the misconception with whiskey in this instance is um, people think of whiskey aging as like you have dist distillate plus, plus wood equals flavor, right? Or mm -hmm. some people are, are more sophisticated and they think distillate plus time plus wood, right? Mm -hmm. Which is you're getting closer. But the reality is when you put the when you introduce the wood congeners matters a lot. So if you aged a whiskey for 10 years in new wood and then 10 years in ex bourbon mm. and you w took the same distillate and you aged it for 10 years in ex bourbon and then 10 years in new wood, those two whiskeys have the same amount of time, the same yeah. distillate and the same wood, mm. but they will taste completely differently. Yeah. Because what happens is oxygen is effectively going to react with whatever's present at the time, right? So mm -hmm. if right away you introduce a ton of wood-based congeners, you will develop certain things that when you then take the wood away, will will develop further in a different direction, right? It yeah. doesn't, it's not like this isn't addition, right? Like this isn't just a simple yeah. addition problem. There's an order it's of these operations. Way more complicated <laughs> than that. Uh, and so what was cool about some of the, the really wonderful components that we were starting to, to, to see with Canadian whiskey was um, we had a lot of stuff that was aged in, in refill or ex bourbon for a long time, and then re racked into um, different types of wood or different mm -hmm. types of barrels later on in the process. Um, right. So the, the, this was a three component blend. Um, there was a 20 year corn component that was aged in thir 13 years in ex bourbon and then transferred into new oak for, for seven further seven years. So 20 year with mm -hmm. 13 and seven, um, uh, it had a rye that was aged for 13 years in, um, in refill casks and then transfer for four more years into uh space side scotch casks um mm. and then there was a rye that was 13 years in ex bourbon and that was transferred into hungarian oak for three years yeah. mm. those were the three components that was actually it but the 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 rye component that was in space side what I, it was so cool it was not palatable by itself, um, uh -huh. <laughs> but incredibly cool because it, cool. it it had rye spice. It definitely had like the mm -hmm. rye spice components that we that we expect and that we like. And it it had it was it had a bold kind of it had bold rye spice for sure. But it mm -hmm. also had developed all of these fruit notes that you basically never see in rye whiskey. Yeah. Uh, and and we when we made the whiskey, we were like one of the things that we were thinking about was we were like, okay, we're going to be bluntly Canadian, which means people are going to expect this to be really docile, right? Like mm -hmm. really mild and yeah. Canadian-esque. Mm -hmm. And so one really? of the things we did when we made batch one was we were like, and this is where the Hungarian came in. We were like, this whiskey needs to slap you in the face. Like, <laughs> we were like, this whiskey needs to, this whiskey needs to be not your average Canadian because mm -hmm. people are going to be, taking a, a shot at this without really knowing anything about found North, not, not, and having a lot of sort of preconceived negative notions about Canadian whiskey. And so when we made this whiskey, we wanted to get that, that bright fruit that is very, it's really just exclusive to rye aged in Canada. They just, you just don't get it in American aged rye. Um, but at the same time, it needed like a, a hefty spicy backbone. Um, mm -hmm. and that was what, that was the intention behind this whiskey. The crazy thing about this is it took us nine months to get the formula. Right. That's right. You said nine it took like so months. long. Yeah. It took yeah. So long. For we made so one. much bad whiskey. We didn't know <laughs> what we were doing. Oh my God. But eventually like blind squirrel finds his nut. Right. <laughs> right, right. 
Half the nose. Uh, I think it's a winner. Uh, but yeah. let's see with the palette. Were you aware of Hungarian oak before this, or were you blending with this Hungarian oak, and that's what kind of keyed you in on it? Because I know Hungarian oak is special to Found North. You guys use that a lot. The latter. We were keyed into it. We were like, "Cool, this is extraordinary. What is this? You know, because we tasted a lot, a lot, a lot of components before we before we bought anything, right? Like, and in fact, we were blending with stuff before we bought it. Right. We were like, we're yeah. blending with the components and we're not going to buy a bunch of stuff if we don't know we're going to use it. So we were That's allowed right, to yeah. sort of blend with it, get it where we wanted it and then say, okay, this is what we can afford and we're going to buy it. Yeah. Um, This is so candy fruity. So good. It's uh, <laughs> What's the proof on this? Uh, this is... 114.2 it's 57 okay yeah so it's it's big. that's kind of like it's it's lighter than some of the other ones i've had in in proof not in flavor um it's bright it's candy it's yeah. uh fruity i love it and it's kind of like a candy necklace <laughs> Inter yeah interesting note on the back end though big spearmint gum for me yes total total like that's where the rye comes in yeah. all the fruits on the front and then the back you're like oh wait yeah cinnamon spearmint like just total rye um rye grain without tasting young that's mm, a really yeah. hard thing to absolutely to, to get by this the way far like that's young. a weird it doesn't take you know a lot of times when you taste rye grain on like a two-year-old you're like mm. yeah, yeah i taste this grain because this thing hasn't even you know this had this whiskey hasn't even hit puberty yet you know this yeah. this whiskey is like hasn't my, even begun to change yeah. my notes mm. my typical note when that happens is this tastes like a dry hay barn yeah that, that, yeah, that's what yeah, i get yeah, yeah, totally <laughs> totally this Delish. tastes like an old hay barn yeah <laughs> <laughs> a dank, an old dank hay barn <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no that's great way, i swear <laughs> yes yeah, no, right now i'm tasting this it's like this is so We've gotten, we've moved more in yeah. the oak direction, right? Like yeah. we're, mm -hmm. all of our products Absolutely. are more oaky than this, except for batch three. You'll see batch three is like, oh. batch three is going to be hilarious. And, nice. uh, and real quick, um, like where was your head at, at this? Cause what year would this have come out? 2021, yeah, April, 2021. Oh, that short ago. So, yeah. Just yeah, like three years ago. Crazy. So what, where was your head at and where was the company at? Like, like, mm. were you having a hard time distributing even Dude, because you were so new? That's a good question. We didn't even have a distributor. No, it, it, it was just, this was insane. No, we, we were like uh, some, a little background on us. When we started, we, when we started the company in 2016, mm-hmm right like the parent company was was a, a whiskey education company and, and oh, that was yeah. a fancy way of saying like we we're consultants who were doing brand ambassador work for for other brands yeah. um and and we basically got to a point um the the progression was we like we did that but we we really weren't capturing any of the upside of the growth of the brand right because like we don't we're not the importer and we don't there's no you're just basically a, effectively a broker um and so we got an importing license and we started to pursue importing some stuff but we basically kept the light on lights on and we built our war chest for for um eventually sourcing something um mm by doing all of this brand ambassador work for a ton of different brands. Um, and when COVID hit, we had been searching for literally years for the right whiskey to source. I mm. went looking for Japanese whiskey to source in August of 2016. Oh, wow. We didn't buy our first barrel of whiskey to, 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 to put under our own brand until 2020. Wow. Um, so we had been doing this for a while and we looked under every rock you could imagine. Uh, <laughs> I've been to like 150 distilleries now. I, I mean, it's, wow. like, it's, it's totally absurd. Uh, but we lost all our contracts when COVID hit. And wow. we were in a total like we're screwed moment when COVID hit. At, we couldn't do tastings. We couldn't do sales. We couldn't do anything. Uh, and... We had just coincidentally 
in like February before COVID really took over the world. Um, Zach had just been at a, at a um, whiskey conference at a whiskey show and met a, um, a, a master blender in Canada. Mm -hmm. And we got, we got the, the, we got the liquid. And what was crazy is we actually, we, we weren't going to like close up shop and really we were like, well, what are our options? And we were thinking about building a distillery. We had an idea for building a distillery, which I still love this idea, but Mm -hmm. I think that that ship has sailed. Um, but, but basically, uh, we, we were thinking about that and we were really vetting that idea and considering raising money and, and going through this process. And that's when we got samples, the first sample sent oh, cool. of, of what would eventually become found North. Mm. And we were, we were like, we were like, wow, there might be something really be something here. And we loved the idea of Canadian whiskey because The reason we love Canadian whiskey, and, and honestly, it's like a it's a funny question because it's like, why are but now five American guys? We have no Canadians on our team, which is mm-hmm. hilarious, right? It's like, <laughs> why are five Canadian guys making? I mean, five American guys making Canadian mm-hmm. whiskey, uh, and we get asked all the time. It's like, why don't why didn't you just go to MGP, right? Like, mm-hmm. or one of the other monster American whiskey. Yeah suppliers of yeah. you know lovely barrels of bourbon and rye which there are and i love mgp don't be- before i before mm-hmm. it sounds like i don't like mgp like love me some good mgp love oh, totally. me some good heaven oh, yeah. hill mgp right. love me some good bardstown like all, all mm-hmm. of the places make great whiskey the problem is they there are a ton of people making great whiskey from those places you can't totally. really do anything to the industry yeah. If you're sourcing from MGP now, right? Like, what am I going to make from yeah. MGP that's going to have any impact on what anybody drinks other than they're drinking less of somebody else's MGP and more of mm-hmm. mine, right? It's like, that's effectively all you can do. Um, and I'm, I know that people are doing innovative stuff. So I, I'm, I'm being kind of uh, glib. But there's only so much innovation whatever. you can compete with. There's only so much you can do. It, you yeah. can only get narrower and narrower mm-hmm. in, that, yeah. in that sphere. And for us, we we always wanted to not just make good whiskey. We wanted to make whiskey that has some effect on what people think about the category and what people drink. Um, and so the idea of Canadian was awesome. The idea of making a premium Canadian whiskey was awesome because it was completely against the grain of people's perception of Canadian whiskey, right? It's like Mm. people think Canadian, people think black velvet, crown Royal Canadian club, perfectly fine whiskeys, but Mm. not, they don't think stag, you know what I mean? (laughs) For sure. And, and so if we can make a whiskey that moves people, yeah, that's awesome. If we can make whiskey that moves people a little bit closer to Canadian and hopefully moves Canadian uh, producers a little bit closer to our consumers because honestly like the canadians should be making whiskey like this they yeah should. that's a good point <laughs> like, they should and if don't we tell do, them that late <laughs> yeah, don't, yeah don't tell if, them that if we do what we've set out to do more canadians will make more whiskey like this that's a great um, point and that's awesome that, <laughs> that's actually think of that that actually moves the needle, right? That changes yeah. mm-hmm. how people drink, and that's cool. Um, yeah. So when this sort of when this came along, it it checked all our boxes, except for we didn't know how to actually execute it. Right? <laughs> it was like, yeah, this is a great concept. Just figure it out. So after after nine months of wow. making this whiskey, we were like, "This better be good," you know. This. Mm-hmm. We better have gotten this right, or we're so well to so, me. so screwed, right? Like yeah. so screwed, you can't imagine how screwed we were. All mm. our money, like we were broke when we launched. I mean, Jesus, like every dollar we had, we put into starting this brand. Wow, and nobody took salary for a year. <laughs> wow, <laughs> like, mm. right? Like it, it was, it was, it was tough going. And so we made batch one, and we had batch one, and then we actually made batch two as well because we didn't think you could launch a brand. With just, just one, one whiskey, thing. just yeah, silly. Right. Yeah. So we made batch two, and um, 
I'll tell you about batch two in a second, but to answer your finally answer your question, uh, we sent samples of batch one and batch two to um, Lou Bryson. Uh, nice, Lou. Lou yeah, was uh, tasting whiskey. Was, yeah, yes, which is I think my probably my favorite whiskey Great book ever. Mm. I love tasting whiskey. Uh, and uh, and I we sent it to Lou, and I, Lou called me and was like, "Hey, I just got the samples," and I literally my heart was like. Bum, 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 bum. I mean, I was oh, like, right. you know, I was like, I was, it was, yeah. I remember just feeling, and I was like sweating as I was talking uh -huh. about it. I was waiting for what he had to say about it. And um, hilariously, he actually ended up really liking Batch 2, but his first impression mm -hmm. wasn't that he loved it. When we did, we, he and I did a, um, a live stream like a month later. And oh, he was cool. like, okay, I've really come around on Batch 2. But he was like, I remember he was like, he was like Nick Batch Two, like I don't know about, but he was like Batch One. He's a fucking amazing rye. Nice. I, just, I remember I like sank yes. to my knees, man. I literally, I was just like, <laughs> I was like, oh god. He was like, no, you guys have something here. This is That's really. Awesome. He was awesome. like, I haven't had a rye like this in a while. Like this is an yeah. amazing rye, and I was just like, the sweating, you know, was just, all that was, nine months yeah. was worth it. Yeah, and, totally. And at the time, was it selling well, or, or were you? Yeah, we hadn't time? sold it yet. We hadn't okay. sold it yet. We hadn't even. You know, it was literally like, here it is. Yeah. Um. No, it it. Yeah, lo, I'll answer that question when we do two, because two cool. is two in a lot of ways. Like, yeah, and that's where what uh, North like, really began. To, uh, I'm trying to get you to tell the story of yeah, like when like the train starts rolling real slow here, and when did that train just like <laughs> suddenly take off With, as trains um, don't do? <laughs> yeah, when did you start do. taking salary and feeling good about it? <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm nosing right. batch two now. Yeah. Okay, you know. so batch two. So we wanted to make batch two as a rye. <laughs> it's not. It's eighty percent corn, nineteen percent rye, one percent malted barley. But but the intention originally when we made batch two, it was going to be a rye. Um, mm. But we were fiddling with the we were fiddling with the ratio. Um, the corn the corns that are in batch one and batch two are the same. Um, and we had this corn component that was thirteen years in ex in ex bourbon and seven years in New American oak. And we were just we were like. We were like, God, this corn is so good. What if we increase the corn? And so Sammy and I started tweaking it and, and we moved it up like 30% corn, 70% rye. And we were like, oh man, that's getting really, that's getting really good. And then we moved it to 40, 60 and we were like, oh shit, that's really, really, really good. <laughs> and then we got to 50, 50 and we were like, that's amazing. And then we went up to 60 40 and we were like we need to have a conversation about what this company actually makes right because <laughs> this is in a rye and we're definitely yeah. going to release it uh, and we had a conversation because oh, wow. this is late in the product you got to remember we've spent a year like formulating an idea of what this brand is going to be we've written all the copy our copy our, refer, our original website said like rise above like rise r y e uh, nice above, yeah, right? yeah like rise above like we just were convinced that we were a a, a rye company you know and, <laughs> and batch two you're already questioning batch two we can't call it bourbon we can't call it rye we can't call it anything you know we just call it cast yeah. strength whiskey and i remember we we settled on 80 percent this corn and then two other ryes uh the primary rye was actually aged in a in a weeded bourbon barrel it was a cool. it was a um really delicious 17 year and and so it, it ended up 80 80 19 one and and we we were just like, all right, we're just gonna call this cast strength whiskey. We we're like, no one's gonna buy it, right? We, I mean, we were, just, we were just like, nobody's gonna buy this whiskey. We we're so screwed. Like, and and we said, all right, we'll just release it. It'll be good to have two different things that are differentiated. And then we were like, and then we'll go back to me. The next batch will be rye, and we'll just stick with rye. Like, and then we'll just and over time we'll sell through batch two at tastings and stuff. But we just we weren't convinced that consumers would buy a non-categorizable whiskey, mm. right? That that's just an unfamiliar category. It's just cast strength, whatever, you know? Um, and that's not what happened. Uh, <laughs> what ended up happening was um, a writer out in California tasted it, um, was a, uh, uh, was the buyer for a retail account um, out in California, a really serious account out in, out in California. 
we cold emailed him and we're like, hey, we want to send you samples. And he called us the next day that after he got it, he, he was like, yeah, I got it. He called us the next day and he was like, how much of um, how much of these whiskeys did you send to California? And we were like, I think like 60 and 60 cases. We, we were using Park Street, which is like a self-distribution, basically. Oh, wow. We were like, yeah, I think like 60 and 60 cases. And he was like, cool, can I buy all of it? Whoa. And we were like, what? You know, That's amazing. Like, can I buy all of it? And we were like, well, <laughs> maybe. Can we make like a few calls first? He's <laughs> like, yeah, just tell me how much I get. I'll take up to all of it. Wow. And up to all of it <laughs> yeah yeah and he ended up um he ended up writing uh he ended up writing an article and he and, uh, and kind of like an email post about it and he wow. and he was like if you didn't get stag antique collection this year buy found north batch two. wow and it sold out everywhere on me it got like it got picked up like that and people just went and um and we really like we weren't we weren't in that position where we were like oh we've made it the whiskeys the whiskeys did immediately both win double goals at san francisco world nice. Spirits competition which was fortuitous and very helpful just like validating the brand yeah. you know because you're reaching yeah. out to retailers and they're like who the hell are you and it's right. like hey <laughs> we're these new guys and like double goals i actually I couldn't care less anymore about the, we don't even enter yeah. into competitions anymore. It's just like, mm -hmm. there's no, it, it, uh, that's for a story for another day, but <laughs> we, basically I, like, I somewhat understand. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's just kind of like, what, okay, what, what's the benefit for us? They either yeah. like it and it's the same affirmation, probably not with most of our customers because most of our customers yeah. aren't like pouring through the totally. competitions trying to find whiskey or how many they double don't... golds did they win <laughs> right or <laughs> like you one. don't get a double gold to and people are like yeah. oh what's wrong with this batch and yeah it's like, what's wrong with this is found north guy... over <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah, exactly. found north over? yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. so but at the time it was very validating but that the crazy the crazy thing was was we made batch. That's why we made batch four, which we'll talk about in a second. Ooh, I'll right. actually tie this whiskey. So this is the most coveted found North whiskey, by the way. Not right. Bad. I get more emails about, I have every found North. Do you have batch two? Then I uh -huh. get about anything else. I can yeah. find, I have one through everything, but I don't have two. Where can I get two? And it's like, we made 1300 bottles of it. We were a tiny company when we launched Ooh, it. Wow. There isn't any of it anywhere. Call me, uh, call me Lou Bryson, but I think batch one beats this one out at least yeah, on the first one. sip. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So yeah, I, I sipped earlier too. Um, it could just be, you know, I, I do have that. Um, if you didn't get George T. Stag by this sentiment, like, uh, welded in. onto my brain, but, um, it does have a bourbony nose. Yeah, yeah. There's not a lot of creaminess. There's not a lot of rye or anything. There's, uh, it just has like kind of a brown sugar standard bourbony nose to me. Yeah. I, I think That's some Mm -hmm. I, I think the rest of the whiskeys we've made are all better than batch two. Okay, um, I don't feel so bad now for saying that. <laughs> no, I, I, I thought we did not we did not know how to get the best out of the corn components from Canada when we made this. We had a really lovely corn component. We had a really lovely rye component. They worked extremely well together. We put in a third rye and we got something that was good, yeah. tasty, mm -hmm. and some degree of complexity but yeah. like this thing just goes like this right it just it's just a straight shooter it's just Kinda like with oh you. if you want something that's bourbon adjacent try found north batch too now it's like I, good bourbon I, adjacent yeah i think it's better than i'm s saying but when yeah. you drink this and then you try like batch eight yeah you're like it's holy cow mm -hmm. these yeah. are these these guys have a different these guys just do different stuff now. Um, even if it's the, even if it's a similar grain ratio, and yeah. there are some, there are some, some layers of this. This batch two was effectively the prototype of what we make, and it was very much a prototype, nice. like not fully built out the way that we make our whiskeys now. Uh, and I think people are obsessed because 
they got the the people who've had it got there early and that mm-hmm. and there's like a there's something exciting about that and the people who haven't had it are bummed are bummed out that they missed out and so they're looking totally. for it i don't think it's better than I think it's really good, but I don't think it's better than anything else we've made. I really that's don't. great. <laughs> I tell you, the the finish lasts for days. I um I was surprised by how long the finish held on. I mean, that finish ramps to uh, over nine out of ten. It it ramps to a nine point five, and it holds for so long that that you start to think like, how long is this finish going to go? Like, how long it's is just this going like, to sit? Yeah. yeah. So it holds for a really long time. And I think that is the most impressive thing about it to me is how long the finish stays high. That's true. Not all bourbons the, have a long finish like that in a good way. And and off so the thing that batch two did extraordinarily effectively was introduce the concept of you can age something for, you know, yeah, it's 16 year age stated, but five percent mm. of the liquid is his 16 years this 80 oh, wow. percent of the liquid is 20 years old wow. 20 year corn that's got this 13 7 regimen oh, is spectacular yeah. because you get the the development and the integration of the flavors and the wood sugars on this thing just like you say they just sit there on the back of your palate forever and it literally never dips into over oaked not even close it doesn't even get yeah, close yeah. to over yeah oaked, i agree right? and, and that that was cool. when we were like we were like, wait a second, this is really cool if you like bourbon because you can get the super aged profile without getting slapped in the face with wood at on right. the finish, yeah. right? Yeah. That uh that that 13 7, that's with the seven being the new fill, right? Yep. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The NAO, the new American Oak. Oh, so nice. batch two, you know, getting such high praise, I assume caused batch one to suddenly start flying off the shelves too. So batch two got high praise. Batch one started to to batch one moved on its own because rye drinkers, yeah. su- like people who seriously love rye, always. And we get it's it's funny because there are fifteen times as many bottles of bourbon consumed as rye every year in the U.S. So oh, like, wow. we should have figured this out that batch mm. two was going to do really well. So this yeah. brings us right into batch three and four. So what we released one and two, and then we released three and four. Um. When we made three and four, we decided we were going to make a rye because we were going back to our roots and we wanted to make the sequel to batch one. But we we were like, but we have to dip our toes into this batch two profile again because people are asking for it. So we got to make it, you know, it's like follow the whiskey here. You know, people, <laughs> people want us to do this. And batch four was when it was like, oh, we're doing this with purpose. We didn't accidentally mm. stumble into batch four the way we did with two. And four, four is a much more dynamic whiskey than two. Four is a way, way more dynamic whiskey than two. Uh, mm. But but we made three as a as a rye, and we made four as a as a corn, which which totally sort of started to change w- what our intention was. Uh, batch three, I believe. Batch three is the only whiskey we've ever released that has absolutely no new American oak, no new oh, oak wow. whatsoever in it. Huh. And it's pretty oaky for you saying that. Comparatively, well, it, at yeah. least to batch one and two. And it was a 17-year rye, an 18-year rye, a wow. t- uh, 21-year-old corn, and a 25-year-old corn. Wow. Uh, yeah. And there was Hungarian oak in this sucker. The the thing on it says American oak, but actually that's because we built the whiskey around a rye in refill American oak. Now, do I remember correctly? This is the only batched release that has a majority rye. No, batch one. Oh, that's right. I forget about batch one because in my mind that's it right. doesn't exist. <laughs> it doesn't, yeah. yeah, batch one. Sorry, I should have said this earlier. So batch one was 66% rye. 30% corn, 4% malted barley. Uh, cool. This one was 64% rye, uh, 32% corn, 4% malted barley. Nice. And while we're on slightly it, slightly different. While we're on it, I got a friend of the podcast question here. So our buddy Josh, uh, yeah. uh, he's he's got a YouTube channel called Your Drinking Buddy, and uh, he he wanted to say hi and he wanted to ask, uh, are there any future plans for a um, another batch release that is a majority rye? 
So we thought about this a lot, and batch batch three batch three sold out after batch eight. That's what, yeah, because oh, wow. I have a batch three because that happened. <laughs> wow, yeah, batch batch three was the slowest moving whiskey we made, um, mm. and and I think for for a couple of reasons. One, we released it at the same time as four, so oh, gotcha. This this concept of releasing two whiskeys at a time, which we did for the first six whiskeys, was actually really stupid um, because it just it invites people to be like, which one do I like yeah. better? I'm mm-hmm. just going to buy that. And then team I'm four buying it. Right. Team yeah. four, team three. Right. Yeah. And again, 15 times as many bottles of bourbon sold as rye sold. Right. So mm-hmm. yeah. the rye can be a really great rye and it's going to get its teeth kicked in by the corn. Um, yeah. And so the, 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 that, that didn't help us. And then we kept making these whiskeys and, and there was this, this like newness to them that, that slowed three down on the, on the other end. Right. So it's like, and, and a lot of times, once you get to batch six, if you see batch six and batch three sitting on the, on the shelf and it's like, this is the most recent batch and here's batch three, you're sitting there in your head, you're immediately going. Yeah, well, what what happened to four and five? Oh, those already sold out, but three is just sitting there, right? So it's like, yeah, yeah. It, it really we did a disservice to three the way we released it. The other thing is, we leaned really into the fruit with three. We like got mm-hmm. we were like, okay, we made a we made a powerhouse rye fruit combo with batch one. Let's lean even further into the the fruit with batch three to create even more contrast. Um, I think it worked. I think it's really really cool there's a fruit there's a florality to batch three that i just mm-hmm. i think it makes it one of the most unique rise i've ever had and we get to be you know we get to be the ones who made it which is even more exciting um but all of that is to say like we get enough questions about making a rye batch that we have some interest in making it um <laughs> i i I think there's there's definitely some interest in doing it, uh, but not yet, not nice. yet. Okay, <laughs> and probably not 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 probably not this year. Um, nice. We we will we will release something that is a majority rye at some point this year, um, but it it will not be a batch. Uh, Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, now we'll go. Now we'll go. Yeah, just just tease a little bit. Okay. Uh, <laughs> are, are, is our is our altitude a little high right now, or uh... <laughs> maybe maybe not? <laughs> <laughs> the um. So comparing so against batch one, batch one had so much candy uh, sweetness, yep. and that Brightness. was the that was the um. Hey, let's show you. Hey, rye drink or a non rye drinker over there. Come see how good rye is. Come see how deliciously yes. candy rye can be. To me, batch three is the rye drinkers rye. Batch three mm-hmm. is the oh, so you like rye already? Check this one out because it's got hella spice and it's got way more full body. It kind of it punches me like an Alberta premium cast strength kind of like, uh, but it's got way That's more fruit point. and way more age to it too. Much depth Alberta to it too. Fruit. Yeah. 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 I love I like three three was the three was one of the harder whiskeys to make. Um getting that fruit getting the fruit and spice to to do what you just were talking about, which is like have that spice really shine through, but retain the really this the the thing about the fruitiness, if you go back to one, you may not have any left, but if you go back to one and you compare one to three, mm-hmm. one is one is yeah there you go okay good so w- one is uh one is definitely fruity but it's not like um it's not as high octave yeah the fruit notes on three are like are uh, like you're you're hitting the really the, the high notes you know they're yeah. really like the mariah mm. carey right um this this that that's that's what was cool about three but it's still spicy and what's incredibly yeah. hard about making this blend was as soon as we started to to ratchet up the spice, it would drown the the fruit notes out. Uh, we actually needed to use six to one spicy flavored component to fruit flavored component to oh, wow. get them even from wow. a flavor standpoint. So from a volume Goodness. standpoint, the, the components that were giving that fruit note 
were there were six times as much of it as there was the, the components that were giving the rye to just uh, get them even. Gotcha. And the hard part about that was those really super bright notes often are thin. They they don't yep. come with a lot of like body, like yeah, textural that fits body. with batch one. And so doing this in a way that had enough body, <clears throat> had enough spice, and retained those fruit notes was was like our first time dabbling with like, oh, we kind of know what we're doing. So now nice. let's see if we can do something that that's pretty cool. Yeah, I gotcha. That was the accomplishment. I gotcha. That I got, was, uh, yeah, that's achieved. It's got the fruitiness. It's got a depth. Um, berry fruitiness more than um, candy. Candy fruitiness, yeah, but it's still got that spice and that almost that like finish of a nice, good aged rye for yeah. sure. I think it's sweet melon. I think it's Ooh. Like a melon. yeah. Give me like, a not, moment. like a honey melon, like a heli honey melon. Not even not can cantaloupe's like stickier. <laughs> more like honeydew honey melon. Yeah, honeydew. Thank you. Mm. I can get behind that. I might be crazy. It's okay. We're yeah. all crazy. Yeah, <laughs> we're all into whiskey. Therefore, <laughs> yeah. Have you seen the assortment of Glen Cairns on my desk right now? We're, we're, <laughs> we're all a little crazy. I got batch four in my hand, though. I do too. Okay. So, cool. so two to four is, I think, where the Found North story starts to get really interesting, um, because we wanted to take we we really wanted to take two and like give it more layers and stretch it out even more. Um, yeah. And and that's not to say just like to, just trying to extend the fourth quadrant and make the the finish longer, but also the finish on two is is great. It's really from like a pure like you hit the ball a long way down the middle of the the, the drive, you know, exactly. like down the middle of the fairway, right? No frills. But, but, yeah, it was just like boom. Okay, it goes on for a long time, Cre creating layers of flavor that actually extend on the finish was what we were trying to do mm -hmm. more with four it's like it's not just that it's a long finish it actually has a lot of thickness to it it is definitely you can tell it's a continuation or a expansion or a improvement on batch two in my opinion yeah you can tell batch the corn two. is a little more forward yeah um yeah. but okay. you can also tell like there's um did you do any special finishes on batch four yeah so batch four had Batch four was when we really started to lean into Hungarian oak. We had a 26-year-old mm -hmm. Hungarian oak component in this. Um, it had wow. a 17-year corn component, a 21-year corn component, and an 18 and a 19-year rye component. Nice. And one of the rye components also had Hungarian oak. So this is when we really started going like, oh, Hungarian oak is friggin' awesome. Like, nice. just mm -hmm. so cool. Um, and we started to really work with some of these Hungarian oak components with this whiskey. Eventually, I, yeah, no, you know what? I don't want to jump the gun. Uh, so I sipping this compared against two. I think four is substantially, substantially more interesting than two. Yeah. I think the the finish hits the same, and that was kind of all I had to say about two. But this has more creaminess going on. It's yes, it's it it is more full bodied the my it's more mouth coaty it's a little more yep. oily it just like it's much more of an experience uh throughout the entire experience uh whatever oh. <laughs> then two, <laughs> two, two was just kind of like at the end was where it really shined but this shines the whole way so, yeah two so so two two had the had the finish it's a little one note that the fin that the whole whiskey's a little one note with two. Mm -hmm. Two two what I will say is two has a great entry. Like, particularly if somebody's new to Found North, you're like, oh, I wonder what this is. You drink two, you're just like, whoa, oh, whoa, this is not what mm -hmm. I expect Canadian whiskey to be. You know what I totally. mean? Like it's just that that piece of it we definitely nailed. I think four tastes more on profile with where Found North is. And two nice. tastes a little mm -hmm. bit more like bourbon, totally right? Like agree. four, four you you still it's still bourbon adjacent, but four was when we started being like, we don't have to make it just taste like bourbon to make good whiskey. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like we can we can have the things that remind people of bourbon, but like we don't have to just make bourbon to make good whiskey. 
What yeah. would you just do? I just nosed Peregrine. <laughs> I uh, just nosed the recent batch or the the upcoming batch, and I was like, "Whoo, yeah, this um, is better." I mean, batch one is calling my name. The funny thing, I'll just say this real quick. The funny thing is that batch two gets all this attention, but it is the least of the five I've drank so far. It's the least uh, exciting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's good. Don't get me wrong. But it's like even the most recent one. I'm like, whoo. Nice uh, caramel on that one, too. So batch four was the first one where I really started to. Well, just like you you just said, uh, it's it's more in line with where Found North ends up later in life. Uh, and I, I totally get that from the whole experience that is batch four so i was like well where are they now and i went and knows peregrine and peregrine has an <laughs> insane like, oh, <laughs> an insane tobacco depth on the nose relative to four um it's it, it's that same big presence but it's it's just it's even deeper with the tobacco stuff going on on peregrine so four is when we started playing with molasses so so Ooh. um uh, one of my favorite distillers on the planet is Maggie Campbell. I think she is a genius. Um, she she was one of the 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 original head distiller over at um, Privateer, mm. which is a rum distillery up in Ipswich. And now oh, she's cool. she's the the big boss down at at Mount Gay. She got the the kind of nice good for her. Um, but she started. Uh, she actually started in brandy. Um, but, but when I was like super early on in my career in spirits in general, um, I went up and she gave me a tour of privateer. And one of the things they do there is they like, they give you a molasses tasting. You just taste sugar and they Uh just show you how different sugar can taste. Right. Interesting. you want to see how different sweet can be. Um, and that that's like the sweetness profile of batch four is I think the highlight of the entire whiskey. It has a rich molasses Love note that. that's completely mm. different than your average bourbon. That's a good point. Um, yeah. Bourbon doesn't bourbon doesn't get that sticky heaviness that right. we get from our Hungarian aged components of corn yeah. that are in so many of our whiskeys. And I think four really was like. We were like, oh shit. And we and honestly, the fruit profile is is not there yet with our corn. Our corn releases by four. We were still exploring with being bourbon adjacent. And it was like two is like as close to bourbon as anything we made. And four is like, okay, can we can we stretch it? Can we get a little further away from bourbon and just a little bit more into this super integrated sweetness? this really interesting wood profile, like where, where can we go with that? But we really hadn't dabbled much in fruit. That was, that's, that's not to jump the gun here, but when you get into seven and eight, that's when we started really integrating fruit into the profile of these corn dominant whiskeys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got to call out. (laughs) I gave the wrong age step. We got to call Go out the fact that that you say the word tour as tour. Yeah. <laughs> it must be a Northeast thing. It's Boston. Because I say tour and then Robbie and Brian say tour. Yeah. And so it's when you said you toured the uh, tour. the distillery, tour. I was like. Yeah, Cole was nodding and, and I was like, over here like <laughs> shaking my head like, no. <laughs> oh, man. I also have to call out that Team I completely. Tour. Botched. I completely botched the whiskeys that are in batch four. I just went uh-huh. into total. I no, went into on, total uh, 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 batch six mode. I no, literally no. said the entire profile of batch six. Oh, and I, don't, I have no idea. So batch four was was um, eighteen year rye, eighteen year rye, twenty one year corn, twenty five year corn, and Hungarian. Okay. The nice. the corn the corn that's in uh, uh, the twenty six year corn that's in batch six is the same as the one that was in batch four. Oh, um, which I'll very get into cool. in a second. So very cool, very cool. So sorry to everybody who's listening. Is like I thought batch four was an eighteen year. And he says there's a seventeen year <laughs> corn in there. Me. Yes, yes. I screwed that <laughs> up. Funny. The listener no, that's who funny. noted that immediately. We want you to write in. We want to be your yeah. Friend. Right in. Please. <laughs> Maybe we'll you give please, you a job I, at Chill Filtered. F- file a complaint at <laughs> yeah. team yeah. at. Fa- 
found northwhiskey.com. Yeah. Don't send I heard it they'll to send me. you I a free bottle. Have to deal with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. They'll send you a free bottle if you point out yeah. mistakes. Yeah. A batch, um, batch success. Yeah. yeah. Oh no! Don't, don't get me started. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that later. But um, funny. batch two uh, was there since you're talking about differences and and everything. Was there something about batch two that gave it its the bourbon influence more than anything else? I just think it was where that corn component was in its aging cycle. It okay. it 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 hadn't like because I I we still have a little tiny bit of that corn left. It's now twenty four years old, um, yeah. and we have a little bit of it left. And um, for funsies, I went and grabbed uh, from the liquid library a sample of the original twenty that we used oh, in nice. um, in batch two, and I yeah. tried it against a sample of how it tastes now and it's astonishing how That's different cool. they are now yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's cool but it's four like years kind of after like, 20 whoa. years yeah whoa, i love that kind of stuff after and 20 like, or 20 to 24 it just it's yeah. changed so drastically That's in a world where there's so many variables to lock in all variables but one and then That's compare awesome. that against four years later or whatever yeah that, i'd love that kind of stuff it's the whiskey geek in me just goes absolutely banana uh, right. just cool. absolutely banana crazy over that stuff it, it's really fun so right. which no oh, go, go ahead. ahead no, no I, was I was just thinking like do you think things would be differently if you were stationed down in uh, georgia or something like that would i would i be making different whiskey or would i be what well how how much do you think the would the you say tour instead of tour to, yeah yeah exactly uh, yeah, 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 yeah if you lived in I would, Atlanta? I would say so I went to, you know, I went to school in North Carolina and, and it was so funny because like, I don't think of myself as having a Boston accent, right? Like, <laughs> you think you watch Goodwill Hunting or The Departed oh, and yeah. you see what, my, my boy's like, wicked smack. <laughs> my boy's wicked smack, you know, and they, they get like, <laughs> they get really into, you know, accenting or, or, or messing with yeah. the R's and all kinds of it. R's, R's get taken away from like pack and all yeah. those different words, oh, yeah. but they get added to idea. You, it becomes idea. idea. Yeah, idea. Mm -hmm. I got an idea to go over the pack. It's like <laughs> you stole an R, and then you what? What the hell's going on? Um, and I don't say any of that. You know, I like that's a tiny. That's the funny thing is you don't even get that accent in actual Boston anymore. Yeah, you used to get that in South Boston, but South Boston mm -hmm. doesn't have that. You have to go up to Ravia, right? You gotta <laughs> go to like a different part of you know. Um, the funny thing is, like when I went down to North Carolina, there were a few words that I said that that people just lost their minds over. i was like really what uh, school did you go to i went to davidson where's that davidson's uh uh like well like 25 miles north of charlotte okay so kind of west or -er portion of the yeah. state yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah no that's funny go ahead what were the words oh the words um yeah uh so so i don't say room uh-huh I say rum, rum. Yeah, like oh yeah yeah. I'm gonna head up to my room. I'll be back. I'll, uh, I'll be right back. Right. People were like, "You're what?" I was like, "Like my say rum? it again." <laughs> my rum. I was like, "Really?" And I was like, "How do you say it?" And they're like, "Room." And I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> you think you're fucking Harry Potter?" Okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> That's like me in uh, Philly uh, growing up there. I, I don't have much of an accent, I don't think, for a Philly accent. But I will say, um, I can't say drawing. Like, drawing. Drawing? You say drawing. drawing. Yeah, so drawing. do I. Yeah. yeah, yeah you throw yeah, an yeah. L in there? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, there's an L. Yeah, there's an L in there. It's same with straw. straw. Yeah, like if I'm sitting okay, I don't straw. say I say straw. I say mm -hmm. straw. But I say draw. Like, mm -hmm. I'm drawing. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. hard to it's say. Funny. Like, there are a few drawing. of them that I just. No, uh, yeah. you tore, you we tore were... guys, and your straws. You tore, <laughs> you, you tore guys. Go back to your room. <laughs> yeah, go yeah. back to your. <laughs> okay, batch five. Okay, yep. all right, batch five. All right, batch five. Batch five is such a fun whiskey. I can't even stand it. I Ooh. love this whiskey. Great nose already. Definitely different than the others. It it's is a weeder. Uh, is oh, it? That's right. This is there's the wheat in this, um, John. Uh, this is all right. 
This is the simplest blend we ever made. It's just really? two whiskeys. This is 73% 21 year old corn blended with 27% eight year old wheat. Wow. Like just like mostly wheat, maybe a little bit of malted, malted barley. No, no malted barley. No, no just barley pure wheat. Percent. Wow. Pure wheat. Canadian whiskey, baby. This wow. is this is 70, so 73% corn, 27% wheat. Straight up. Wow. That's all the way that and this was this was a this was a Sammy idea. And Sammy just Sammy, we we got sent this wheat component. And here's the thing about wheat. Wheat has a really interesting grain profile. But it's an asshole. It 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 it's really a pain in the ass. Wheat wheat does not cooperate. By the time it gets like even and balanced, you've aged out of the wheat profile. Mm. So maintaining the wheat profile, but also creating like a very um a very contained and a very you know balanced whiskey is incredibly mm. hard. And so this is why I have such a love hate relationship with weeded bourbons. Because look, if you're Stitzel Weller and you do it perfectly, like yeah, yeah it's going to be a banger. Um, but a lot of times, they it either doesn't have enough of a wheat profile, or it's too jagged. It's all you know. It's just and so Sammy had this idea. He said, you know, I've always said this about wheat, and he was like, "What if we we got sent this wheat component?" And and he was like, "Hey, what if we just..." used super old corn to give it all of the balance and even out the blend mm -hmm. but use younger wheat that has really the the heavy wheat profile because this wheat was incredibly flavorful but it was all like it was bimodal what i mean by that is like all the flavor was in the the first quadrant and the fourth quadrant there was yeah. nothing in the middle you know it was like it was all over the place as a as a component and and he was like, let's just try this at 70, 30 corn to, to, to wheat. And he picked the two whiskeys we ended up using. And I, I literally was like, this is bottleable. The first <laughs> test blend. I was yeah. like, this is amazing. We tried it, it at, we tried it at 75, 25 and we were like, oh, that's really good too. But the middle might be even better. And we went 70, <laughs> <laughs> we went 73, 20 to 27 and it was done. It was the fastest whiskey we've ever made. We That's made it great. in like an hour. And I, the things I loved about this whiskey were, I think it tastes awesome. I mean, I think this whiskey This is my awesome. second favorite of one through five already. I, I just, I think this whiskey is absolutely yeah. just delicious. Um, yeah, I, there are yeah. a lot of people who write us and are just, we get a lot of people who are, who are basically like, I know everybody loves the corn, the the like the regular corn batches you make, but batch five is your best whiskey. Um, and there are days where I wake up and I agree. I I, <laughs> there, I I don't in the end like if I intellectualize it, I like other whiskeys more than batch five. Mm -hmm. But if you were gonna if you're gonna just be like, hey, it's July. You're gonna have one of your whiskeys on the rocks. You're not like sitting down and in and and just like internalizing all the tasting notes and getting really intellectual with it. You're just playing cornhole on the porch and it's sunny out and you want That's something great. to drink that you made. Like batch five all day. All that's give great. me one of those giant rocks and like five ounces of batch five. Ooh, and that's all I'm gonna drink moment. all day. And I'm gonna be so happy. That's cool. I um I'll take a slightly opposing view on this one. Do I think it's delicious? Yes. But for me, it's fallen bottom two in, in what we've Ooh. tried so far today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Shut it. I'm, I'm out. Team Tour, I'm, I'm take over this podcast. Yeah, right. <laughs> maybe the other no, tour sorry. listeners, maybe the other tour <laughs> listeners will agree with me. But, um, it's uh and and yeah, I mean you did kind of make a good point there. Maybe I'm intellectualizing <laughs> to <laughs> it's another <laughs> northeastern word, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but the complexity of the other whiskeys is more fascinating to me. And the journey that this one takes me on, uh you know, Sim scale scale of one to 10 yeah, through yeah, yeah. the timeline of the sip uh it ramps up very high at two to five and it's that's where all the deliciousness is but about time six it 
it drops to like a three out of 10 and the finish holds that three out of 10 throughout the rest of the time. And that's just not my personal flavor profile. I hear you, but, uh, but what I, what I beg of you with this whiskey on this whiskey to, 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 in, in defense of this whiskey, um, not, not that I think it needs it. This, this sucker sold out in like five minutes. (laughs) No, people went nuts over this one. And, and there are, I'll get into that in a second, but, but in defense of this whiskey, the fat profile on this whiskey is like, if you if if you mean like fatty if, oils, I mean like if batch four reminds me of the molasses tasting I did at Privateer, mm, yeah, batch five would be like my mom. Okay, so my mom loves butter. It's one of the funniest mm-hmm. things you've ever seen. My mom is just like, a tiny southern little woman, slip of a woman from the north. No, she's like, she's like, she's like, yay high. My uh-huh. dad's this big burly guy. My mom's just a little little, little shrimp. Um, and and she's just this tiny little slip of a woman. And she comes into the kitchen every once in a while. Uh, she did this all the time when I was growing up. And she just wants a snack. And you know what she does? Take she goes to the butter dish, and Ooh. she just scoops it. And she's just, <laughs> It just oh, chomps great. down like salted Irish butter. It's, it's God just her intended. I, like, oh my God. I need at least yeah. like a, a sliver of cracker for my butter, yeah. but I do love butter. But but if this if if batch four is like the molasses tasting, batch five is my mom's dream. It's just a straight butter tasting. If you want to yeah, taste man. every every different like shortbread butter, like like Irish butter, this thing is so fat. It's just a fatty, yeah. fat, fat whiskey, and that's what I love about it. It is fatty, definitely fat, fat. Th- this is it is. There's no question that it is the least comp- complex whiskey that we're going to taste today. Mm. And if you include other things we made, it might be the least complex whiskey we've ever made. Um, <laughs> but but there are songs that you really love because the the yeah, intricacy just, of the music, hit right? And there are songs that just hit those what are those like yeah. four chords that everyone like oh, uh-huh. the, so, you know what i'm talking about the, yeah, like, the yeah, four chords yeah, that yeah. everyone plays in every yeah. single song you totally. know batch five is just a it's just a simple fat yeah. chord and, it just, like, vroom, <laughs> and you're just like if you and like that chord yeah. Yeah, this is this is and I'll for I'll, you. I'll uh I'll admit it if myself. you want something more uh, complex, I I like your your hundred percent your analysis is not wrong, and I know. <laughs> that. No, that batch five said, is like, uh, out of first five <laughs> batches. Batch five, I would say at so far out of the first five, one five four three two for me. Ooh. Okay, yeah. I'm not on top of it enough to give you a full rundown, but I will tell you. With your mom's love of butter, there's this movie called Butter. Have you ever heard of it? Movie called No. Butter. It's a it's this it. goofy movie of some Midwest town that's like oh, the I number one Midwest butter movies. producer of the nation or something. I don't know. I'm just making stuff God up. Bless Whoa. But there's like a they they do a whole like weekend like event that's all about butter because their whole town's about butter. Is it a they, like, documentary? They make butter sculptures. No, it's a it's a comedy drama Still, I'll watch movie. That. They make butter sculptures. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Already, <laughs> there's I'm like a competition and everything yeah for if somebody loves butter i highly recommend the movie butter <laughs> i will I love pass butter. it along to my mom very good very good <laughs> she'll, she'll, yeah yeah she'll she'll enjoy that okay now i do have one more question before we move on why yes does the lack of complexity here make batch five better than batch two for you yeah <sighs> because the the lack of complexity is is a flavor thing, not a texture thing. I actually think the texture of batch five is enrapturing. I think it's just exciting. Um, yeah, it's not it's not a whiskey where you taste it and you hear, you know, all of this crazy music. It it's much more of a of a whiskey where you you feel it on your palate and you're like, this is the the whole point of wheat. I've actually. I, I've talked to some distillers about making weeded bourbons and what they'll say is like the wheat gets out of the way. And, and what they really mean is like rye brings. So if you think about it, like rye as a secondary grain brings so much character and flavor. It almost overpowers the corn wheat yeah. gets out of the way. It layers in texture and butter and a little bit of sweetness. And that's really all that, that it does. Um, and it, and, and so it's not about 
it's really not about like, hey, let's create this super complex whiskey. It's much more about like, from a from a flavor note standpoint, it's much more about like, let's give something that has a, a, an unbelievable, that, when people say you could chew on a whiskey, this one's not chewy because it's not overly tannic, but it's the same sensation of like, wow. You're, you're, this thing has been fat washed, right? Like people yeah. fat wash the, exactly. the certain things, all right? Like this yeah. is a fat washed whiskey in and of itself. Um, and I, I sometimes think that that's what w- bourbon producers are going for with wheat. Mm. Um, and so the thing that's exciting about this is like, if you like weeded bourbon, if you like Weller, please drink this next to a Weller. Cause you're yeah. just going to see, you're going to be like, and people do this on on Reddit and do this on on YouTube all the time with Found North. They do batch five one on one against Wellers, and they talk about yeah. them. And I just think it's a really fun side by side. You're like, oh fuck, oh this is really interesting. Yeah, Weller. That's first, why. Please. Whereas batch batch two, I love batch two because batch two started the journey for us. But just as a whiskey. It's kind of boring compared to what we ended up doing with this profile. Right. Whereas yeah. Batch Five is like, and when when we release the sequel to Batch Five, when we release the next batch that is a weeder, which will happen, I promise to anybody who's listening, um, we took it another step. Like, Ooh. we we elevated our game, and it's it's weeder, but it's like it's weeder done the found north way, where where we're layering in more flavors. It's not just like oh, we hit this. It's like, oh, we now know what we're doing a little bit. <laughs> okay. Awesome. I just, I, uh, you don't have to, the... oh, go ahead. You don't have to react to this, but, uh, I'm like, I could see batch five with some like berry fruit Ooh. presence being a, <laughs> being a real thing. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's not what we did. <laughs> okay. but that's, not, right. that's not what we did. I, I, but I'll come back when we release it and nice. And Love it. Perfect. I'll Perfect. tell you exactly what we did. Perfect. Um, I tried it next to the Weller 12 and it does bring out like, uh, a little bit of that Weller 12, like, uh, green apple that I love, mm. uh, which oh, I'm digging on batch five. Um, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a fun, that's actually a really fun compare. I did, um, I did a, a, a tasting of some ridiculous weeded bourbons and batch five, like uh, uh, about a month ago with some friends who live nearby who were like, Hey, I have all these weeders. Do you want to bring batch five over and we'll blind it in here? And oh, it was really that. fun. It was like, it was like, Oh, Oh damn. Okay. This is, I don't exciting. suppose did you get to do that with William Leroux Weller? Was that one of them? I did, and nice. I had to do it with some pappy and some other things. Nice. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah, yeah, it was a fun tasting. Very good, very good. You want to right. on a six? Six. So six, six in a lot of ways is like, um, in a lot of ways, six is. You asked when when we were like, oh, when can we take salary? We took salary before six, but six was okay. like. Where you felt yeah, good about taking salary? We we re- we released six and people went nuts over six and and that was when suddenly found north like the second we sold out of six we released seven and it sold out really quickly we released eight and it sold out even faster nice. and it was like when the when the the tipping point for found north from like a discovery brand to we're still really a discovery brand but like a no name brand to like a discovery brand yeah. that's what I'll say was was with six. Um, and six was the whiskey that, by the way, was the five whiskey blend of 17-year-old corn, 21-year-old corn, 26-year-old corn, 18 Ooh. and 19-year-old rye. Um, and in a lot of ways, six was six was when we started to really hit our stride with, with the profile that we were kind of discovering with two and four. Um, it's really cool to have two, four, and six all side by side because you can really see like two is simple – Four, we start getting the 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 molasses, but six, we started to like rock and roll. Um, that yeah. that's oh, yeah. that's when that's when it it, it kicked in. I just uh, that's that what I, we heard of you. We heard of you between six and seven down yeah. north. Six, uh, 
immediately makes me think this might be number one of all the ones I've sipped. Yeah, it's uh, got a nice complexity to it. I'm really, really liking six and I'm getting a little fruitiness out of it. I'm getting a, I'm getting more Starting. fruits than any other. Well, yep. okay, no, 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 not than any other batch because the rise had hella fruits, but this is not a rye. Totally. And, and it's more in the stewed fruits category that I'm getting on this. Totally. Were there, was there sherry involved here, Madeira, anything oh. like that? No, nothing. We, we, awesome. With seven, with seven, we started to deeply explore like fruit profile. And, and that, that, that becomes super transparent. When, when we get into seven, you're going to like, oh, wow. The intentionality behind going from six to seven was so clear. Yeah. And then eight was when we were like, eight was when we had been at this long enough where we were starting to really age some of our own components. And we were like, what can we do? before the blending process where we can really manipulate the the ingredients right not just the blend itself but like how can we how can we start to um you know it's like it's like if you're making a great sandwich it's great to make a great sandwich but you can really elevate a great sandwich by starting to caramelize your own jalapenos you know what i mean like you can like yeah you can start to to and that that started to really happen when actually with eight eight and wow. nice. I, i'll 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 let the cat out of the bag we've already made nine we've already made nice a bunch of them yeah is there caramelized and, jalapenos in it and there's some caramelized jalapenos in, in nine arrow brian you can't add caramelized jalapeno <laughs> to this whiskey <laughs> that is for for anybody who's like hey the 909 yeah. rule or something with canadian yeah. whiskey I was being totally metaphorical. Um, <laughs> it is an X. Did not put any caramelized. It's an X jalapeno or a, it's or a caramelized jalapeno, jalapeno barrel. <laughs> oh, we used an X tequila cask in batch three. Just FYI. Nice. Oh, cool, cool. Uh, nice. Yeah, I know, and it had a little of that jalapeno. That's really uh, cool. Was uh, right, was it. was a rye component or a corn component in the X rye tequila? Component. Nice. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cool. cool. All right. So yeah, six. Like six. Six is fun and six is six is like six is not just another chapter in Found North. You know, you read an uh, like an epic, like a long book, and it it had, obviously it has chapters, but yeah. it's like part two. You yeah. know what I mean? Like mm. six was six was the start of part two of Found North, right? It was like, that oh wow. All right. We we have a and and this was the fun thing about doing batches, right? Batches, by doing batches, we had an enormous amount of freedom when it came to, like, yeah. we can make whatever the hell we want. We can make yeah, a leader. We direction. can make a corn. We can make a rye. We can do whatever we want because that's the mm -hmm. point. Um, six, seven, and eight, obviously, like, they're differentiated from each other, and they really are. Um, mm -hmm. but we went down one of those different branches, right? If like weeder is a branch and rye is a branch and these corn batches that we do is another branch yeah. rather than starting a whole new branch. We were like, there is so much exploration on this branch. There's so much iteration off of this branch. We really feel like we've found a bit of our signature in a way, you know, it was like, look, yeah. we make a lot of things. Per Peregrine is awesome but peregrine's very different from other stuff we make Absolutely. at Fenner. peregrine is not our signature peregrine is yeah. a special edition we make um, yeah batch six is really when we were like this is our signature uh um, like that and that was that was really fun that being said fun story about six mm -hmm. i was pissed off about six oh very really that was six yeah mm -hmm. um Your test batches don't always taste like your final product. Totally. And with with six, we had in the test batches, we had a perfect finish. And six did not end up marrying with the perfect finish. Um, oh, and I actually think the finish on four is better than the finish on six. Oh, I like oh, wow. the first three quadrants of six. I I I think really you start to see what we're what we're going for. The fourth quadrant does not taste like the test batch. Um, it just didn't marry the way we wanted it to. Everybody like people are obsessed with six. People love six. I love that people love six. 
I like six. Six. It's not that it's my least favorite from a taste standpoint. It's just the whiskey I'm most upset about. Oh, <laughs> totally. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? It's like it's oh, not that I dislike no. the way it tastes. It's just like what I wanted from six and what it turned out were different. And that actually really annoys me. Was it mm. an intensity thing on the finish? What was it about? Yes. Okay. The finish is the finish is hotter than the profile of six was um more of the the kind of extended molasses note of four. You know, it was more, I think six has much more oomph in the first few quadrants than four does. Like the mm. six is a, six is a hammer and we meant for it to be like six was like, yeah, let's, let's see how hard we can rock this role. Like that, this was really about coming out with a banger and not just like a banger, like it tastes good. Like a statement whiskey for us that yeah. um, that and we released five and six at the same time and we knew that five was like an easy drinker and so mm. we wanted the counterpoint of six to really be like a heavy hitter you know we wanted you to drink five and six and the same night you know we wanted you to go yeah. like oh this is my easy whiskey to get me rolling and wow it's delicious and fat and then you drink six and you're like oh damn you know what i mean like that that was the idea and I thought the first three quadrants hit that exactly the way we wanted it. But then it's supposed to ride off into the sunset the way that's, that that batch four does. And instead, it just keeps hitting. And no. I, that was not what we were trying to do. Yeah. Well, maybe, at, you know, after you're uh, late in the night in the party that where you drank five that's earlier and now fine. you're in six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. you're much more tolerant of that finish because uh, I am loving it right now. Of course, I've had seven different other things seven to drink whiskeys. before this but, yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. but yeah uh six yeah. uh absolutely has the dark side of found north yes. that i really like yeah. six yeah. hits Definitely on does. the on the upcoming high altitude series that we tasted the same kind of darkness yep. uh and um a darker than eight i'm just going off a little memory here and it's all so. clouding together but uh six seems darker in fruits than eight is and i'm really digging it i six is an awesome whiskey i i i get so many people who email me and say six is their favorite that we've made um although actually usually the email i get is that that six used to be the favorite until they had eight that's ah, six i'm with them so, Seven is seven is very different from six and eight, in my opinion. Six and eight are more similar than than we'll we'll try right sense. now. We'll see what you guys think. But yeah. seven mm. was seven was we we it very intentionally went in a in a slightly different direction with it. Shall we try it? Sounds yeah, good. Let's do it. <laughs> seven is punching more punchy on the nose seven has abv sting like none of the others did on the nose so it's really reaching out and it's been poured for uh, an hour it's been sitting here and it's 31.8 yeah oh is it's, it the highest by chance by far the high well not by oh. far by two proof points the highest okay. nice all right um but this is really interesting because this is the first whiskey where we introduced the concept of manager's proof we had a huge debate with this whiskey um because you can technically water a quote unquote cast strength whiskey down within two proof points of its ABV. Oh wow. Um and so so cast strength by law is not cast strength, which is just wow. like totally classic of the super convoluted, never straight shooting rules of whiskey. Yeah. Um but we and we like this whiskey. So this whiskey is 131.8, and I think it is a point better on the 10 point scale at 130.2, which is what manager's proof oh. is for us. Mm, gotcha. So I should say what manager's proof is. So basically, when we made this whiskey, we were like, we have it, and then we put a little water in it, and we were like, oh, we really have it. And then we had a debate because we were like, how much water are we putting in this and really loving it? And we were like, we 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 thought about it and we were like you know what this whiskey's just straight up better slightly watered down i mean slightly watered mm -hmm. down and knowing the rules we were like we could 
completely without anybody ever knowing, bring this down to 130.2 and call it cash strength. And if the TTB looked into our records, they'd be like, yep, totally up to code. You've followed the rules. You're compliant. No big deal. Yeah. But we think that's bullshit. <laughs> right? I mean, that, and and honestly, the history behind cast strength is pretty cool. The point of cast strength wasn't that you're supposed to drink it at cast strength. The point yeah. of cast strength was a value thing. The The idea behind cast strength dates back to really the 70s and 80s when clear spirits started making a big push in the United States. And from a value standpoint, if you don't have to age it, it's much cheaper to make. But what whiskey producers knew was, look, everybody's drinking scotch and water or bourbon and on yeah. the rocks or whatever it is. They're already watering it down. So they, they thought, OK, the way we can give you more value is by keeping it at a cast strength. You can just add more water. You can control how much water you put in it. And therefore, you can get literally more drinks out of it. So yeah. like. The way my grandfather used to drink whiskey, and I remember this from from a kid, but literally as a kid, was in the afternoon, sometimes the morning, but usually in the afternoon, he would he would pour like a a a a, a, a highball glass, like mm-hmm. two thirds of the way up with whiskey. That's like, <laughs> oh damn, right? And then he would fill it the rest of the way up with water. And over the course of the day, he would drink it and add water. So he was just diluting it throughout the entire day until it was almost entirely water. And that's how he liked to drink. And that was the idea behind cast strength. Cast strength was catering to him. It was just being Mm. like, instead of putting it at two thirds, put it halfway and fill it up with water. You'll get way more drinks out of this. Uh, And so the idea, of course, that's not what happened. What happened was everybody started drinking at higher proof and liking yeah. it more. And that's we're like, why we move all... over grandpa. We're <laughs> drinking this. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. But what we thought about it was when we were making um, seven was we were like, cool, we're going to bottle this at 131.8, but we want to highlight the fact that like you should enjoy found North at different proof points. And yeah. we said, but we'll tell you and we'll put on the back what the distillery, we just called ourselves managers, what, what we drink it at and yeah. how to get it there um and i think the the fruit components that we were really going for in batch seven really actually like pop off the second you bring it down a little bit i feel like i could make like a spectrum out of this as i'm i'm winging this here right now but like batch one batch three are so rye forward and you know well the weeder was a special thing on its own but batch seven kind of bridges this gap between the diversity of found north products where the, you've got your rise over here and seven's kind of in the middle where it's got a lot of creaminess and it's got some interesting floral and it's got really high register bright fruits things going on uh and it hasn't ventured into more of the bourbon heavy and oaky territory totally yeah. So I, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of see seven in the middle of this fake spectrum I just made up in my mind. <laughs> so the funniest thing is, um, we get comments and we get notes where people often will say my favorite found Norths are two, four, six, eight, or some combination of those or one, three, five, seven. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. Cause I'm a one, three, five, seven kind of guy. It's almost always one or the other one side or the other and yeah. honestly that that was we did that intentionally in the sense that we were trying to create contrasted whiskeys the idea isn't for it to be like hey this is our profile and then we just repeat it we want there to be a degree of dinging and donging zigging and zagging for sure Perfect. but TikTok, it wasn't, yeah. it wasn't fully intentional where it was like we're making this profile for these customers and this profile for these guys that's just sort of how it turned out um, but it's hilarious how often I'm on Discord or I'm answering something and it's just like, man, three, five, and seven are my favorite. Or it's just like, f- you guys nailed it with four, six, and eight. You know, it's uh, just like, oh, wow, we uh, we really did stumble into this, this total divergence of style that yeah. we have here. Well, you made the mistake of mentioning Discord, so we're going to have to get you an invite to our Discord server. Uh, oh, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice, uh, nice. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because I see it as a 
very cool story. Like if I were to drink this, even without your background to all these, it'd be, you really hit your stride at six and then built on that. And I'm saying like my favorite of all these actually so far is uh, up until batch eight is actually batch one. Uh, but like you really hit a stride uh, and like, like you were saying, like kind of like what you were aiming for and what you were like building to in batch six. And then you see batch seven is like a continuation of that maturity as a company. Totally. Um, and then, um, I mean, we haven't drank on this, you know, thing batch eight, but I think the best is yet to come to be honest, uh, <laughs> because you guys have really found your, your place and, but still like, it's not like you're like aiming towards one point. It's like, no, we're gonna, we're gonna go up and down, but we're converging to like good, good whiskey. Uh, yeah. Not that you ever You've weren't like all these found, batches are amazing, but found your place. Your place is a trajectory, not a, yeah, not yeah. a destination. Yeah, yes. exactly. Oh, mm -hmm. oh man. All right. Yeah. You guys are making me feel good. I appreciate it. <laughs> 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 no, I, and I think, I think you're, I think you're right. And I think what's really interesting is six was when we were like, we found the darkness of found. Yeah. North, right. Uh, <laughs> the dark side. And, and and yeah. seven was like seven was when we found like the ethereal fruit, right? We totally. really it got brighter, it got fruitier. Eight is where we kind of found them both. Um, yeah, and I agree. With and that. I think, and the cool thing about eight is eight is when we, you think about it, it there are eight whiskeys here in front of us. Plus we did the second summits. Plus we've done the single barrels. Plus we've done the now the high altitude collection. Like. There've been a lot of whiskeys in here, so it it feels like it's been a long time. But to your point, like we released <laughs> Found North Batch One almost exactly three years ago now. Yeah. Right? Like mm -hmm. we haven't been around for that long. Like it's not no, that it's long of a story, right? Right. Um, but but I think the the um, I think the really the really cool thing about about eight is eight we've been we've been around long enough and from a purely financial standpoint right like we we're not you know big company x doesn't own any piece of found north right, right? Yeah. like mm -hmm. like we we very much self funded the the process here That's um, cool. just having done all of the 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 early work before found north was found north when we were just tnt spirits um that's a that's a callback um but <laughs> but uh uh the the really interesting thing is by the time we got to eight we had been here long enough and we had enough money where mm -hmm. we were buying things and recasting it so we now nice. have a lot of so the big the big cool thing of it like you have the high altitude collection where it's like blend recast blend again and mm -hmm. it makes batches seem a little I don't want to say boring, but like simple. All we do is blend. But actually, like now what we've been doing is we're actually recasking a lot of the components. So we're That's manipulating cool. the whiskey before we do the actual blend. Um, and that was when with batch eight, you you get the the Madeira finished rye, which we finished in Madeira yeah. for a while. Like we that that was a that was an extended project. We have owned that that rye component that's in there for years right it's like wow. and we're just starting to see the benefits of the manipulation of the actual building blocks of the actual components where we're mixing our paints god how many analogies can i do we're building our <laughs> instruments i i, I totally. you know. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but that was the that was the cool thing about this whiskey was um the madeira component really accomplishes the integration of some of the different styles of the earlier batches. Yeah. yeah. No, I think the Madeira finish, like I said before, is like this it's beautiful, so like sour grapeness um, that comes with, but it's not overwhelming. It's almost just like a nice finishing note. Uh, and it's yeah, only I'm five not sure which is my favorite. That's five percent of the blend. Yeah. It's yeah. How much yeah, you said it was like than, such a low percent? Yeah, I think it's four. four. Wow, I think it actually ended up only being four percent from a liquid standpoint. Nice. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's uh, beautiful. Yeah, this is the best whiskey of of the eight. And I don't I actually nice. don't. Uh, 
uh, interestingly, tasting, having, I haven't, honestly, I don't know that I've done this before where I've tasted cool. all eight of them in a row like this. This right the here on chill filtered everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is hilarious to say out loud, but I've yeah. never, I no, I'm actually sure I've never done this before. Well, I've tasted That's cool. all eight in a row like this and it's, uh, uh, am I crazy or is this by far the best? Like I really, I think, I think it beats all the there. rest. Yeah. I'm- it's it is absolutely the most complex and it has the most, it hits on fruit. It hits on creamy. It hits on corn. It hits on totally. everything. A little bit yeah. of floral too. It just, mm-hmm. it hits, but you it's can, like, you if can you were see to the progression. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, sorry. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The maturity beyond it. age. Like it's like, you guys have kind of figured out what works in a way Wait that's like, nine. Hey, we know it works, but we're going <laughs> to okay. try random right. different things too. All right. You said it. You said it. Wait till you have nine. We did. I mean, by far the number one most Instagram wrote in question was when's the next batch coming out? Yep. Soon. Nine. Soon. Nine, is, nine is done. Nine is done. The The problem is that there's a long process between, unfortunately, the, the distance between designing blend and getting blend bottled and out to public is shockingly, annoyingly long. And yeah. Um, I won't, I definitely won't get into it, but we had, we, we've had one, one issue and it's like, um, no, honestly, no, it's not worth it. But, but New York is an annoying state. I will say that. <laughs> and it has cost us a month on batch nine. Um, oh, wow. Really yeah. Dang. Maybe I, just the rest of us should get batch nine and New York can have it a month later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, seriously, the problem of course is that <laughs> Uh, a lot of the retailers that ship all over the country are based mm. in New York. <laughs> so, oh, wow. <laughs> so you said they're all not... batch nine is bottled at this point. Hasn't been bottled yet. Okay. Uh, so batch nine hasn't been bottled. The, 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 the next whiskey coming out is, is high out al- is a high altitude collection whiskey. And it also is not in bottle. It will go. I think our, right now our bottling schedule is it'll start. We'll start bottling April 8th. Um, okay. And we'll be done within a few days. Um, and then it's just get it out. Uh, now, granted, you know, things go wrong and maybe it'll be the, the, a week delayed, but we're, we're right. within a month on, on, uh, on the next whiskey. And then uh, batch nine will be, the question is whether we release batch nine or batch seven second summit first. <gasps> oh, oh my <laughs> gosh. Oh, seven S. <laughs> Is it a there is, is a seven S? Is it share? And no comment. I'm not saying anything other than teasing <laughs> the shit out of seven S. Seven oh, S is seven S is is it so a six- cool? It's just nice. mind blowing, and, and, and it's been in there for ages. We've been working on think about six S really? came out forever ago. We've been working on seven S for a while. Okay, and seven S just peaked. We seven S is bottled baby it is wow. in the bottle. it is it is done ski wait we, so uh, uh hold on let me let me look through ahead. my box that you sent was there a 7s nope. in here <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to redo it in a few weeks <laughs> exactly exactly um maybe we'll do a we've done all the batches maybe we'll do a found north specialty podcast yeah we'll just totally. go through all the weird shit we've done <laughs> I was thinking <laughs> earlier, I was like, you guys should take all your ruined batches or ruined barrels rather and like put them together and sell them for 10 bucks a bottle. But I'm like, but that would also like taint the, the name <laughs> yeah, of right. Down North, the name but it would also North. be like a $10 bottle of like high proof, high age <laughs> stuff. No, no. To be honest, a lot of times like the, the cognac barrel that was, that was in, that should have yeah. been in Peregrine yeah, literally yeah. like it went bad it's not one of those Bro. situations like a lot of like the 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 barrels that we didn't use in the next high altitude collection there's nothing wrong with them it was much more a like we just didn't need them slash want them in the final blend that that cognac barrel was unusual in that like it's it's bizarre you taste it versus all the other barrels and you're like how is this anything like you know how 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 is this the same liquid that you wouldn't even yeah. believe you taste it and you're like and it was uncanny because we we blended it we blended it we blended peregrine and we were like oh yeah this is pretty good 
And then we went through and we were like, yeah, it's pretty good. And then we went through the barrels individually, back through the barrels individually. And we were like, barrel 14 is a disaster. What the <laughs> hell? And we took it out and Peregrine was like one inch from the goal line. It was immediately almost perfect. We were like, oh, wow. this is amazing. Dang. And wow. it was, it was like, this barrel is a disaster. And we went and we looked at it. We're like, and I don't know what that, you know, we'll probably re-rack it. You know, you can't, you, that one's not one where you can use it. You have to go in and you have to do something to it yeah. to get it through the hot, weird profile that it has. That's great. And and the only way to do that is to recast it. So we're going to have mm-hmm. to end up recasting it. Um, the fun thing will be when we recast it, it probably will turn in a good direction and then it's like yeah. all right now what do you do with this sucker is it a nice. peregrine second summit no it won't be but you get That'd the idea funny. you get the point where it's <laughs> oh like my god what do you do with this sucker uh, that's funny. we'll, you, we'll find a way to integrate high altitude series you could call it low earth orbit baby <laughs> yeah, yeah. low earth orbit <laughs> <laughs> that's fun i like that that's great okay wait wait wait. so six second summit we totally skipped over i forgot to mention yeah that was like that was like a 600 bottle run right it was a sherry but i think we got yeah i think we got like 600 bottles out of it tops so sherry but seven i mean nuts <laughs> 7S is smaller. Oh, oh really? No. Okay. All right. I'll get my Seven, trigger, get my trigger finger ready. Yeah. Right yeah. Well, I I don't I I have no idea how we're gonna we we actually literally have to figure out how the hell we we're gonna have to do a lottery we're gonna have to do something like there's That's no what, way okay. to just we Perfectly. can't just release it it'll sell out in one minute and it'll sell yeah. out less than one minute like Peregrine. half of the and we're we're, we're like Peregrine. Peregrine, I you know people emailed us and we're like, hey, I, we think a bunch of bots like mm-hmm. got this. I'm sure there were a few, but Found North wasn't on the secondary market when we launched Peregrine. It really, it you know, it was a little bit. You saw it here and there, yeah. but it wasn't one of those like most of the things that get picked up by the bots are whiskeys where people are doing it so that they can flip it, right? Yeah. They don't they don't it's not like you don't set up a bot because you want a whiskey really bad. Yeah. yeah. You sell up a bot because you want that whiskey because you know it's worth 10x whatever it, yeah, it right. retailed that and you just want to you just want to arbitrage the shit out of it. Yeah. Um so I I wasn't worried about it, but now with Peregrine Peregrine's starting to go on auction for some really ridiculous prices. Go on <laughs> and Google crazy. it later. You're going to be like, what the hell? Um, no, it's, it's, it's kind of absurd. We're like what people keep texting us um, screenshots of it. Mm-hmm. being Like, Hey, did you see this? And we're like, Whoa. Um, yeah. How much, that, how much uh, we saw it. We saw it going for like 1200. Uh, what? That on just auction stinks for the sake of Dude, you know people enjoying that also it. that's the auction price there's usually a 25 oh, wow. markup right so oh, that's, that means people are willing to spend 1500 bucks on a bottle of peregrine which is absurd yeah, it, dude me. which is absurd to me yeah. i hope the people that's who are a, doing that's that an are, honor i most guess people, you know most people who are buying peregrine are 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 drinking peregrine mm, i right. what i'm worried about is if we just throw 7s out there yeah there Is people it will be, bought yeah. it and people will do it for the sake of and so yeah. we're we're really we're really trying to think about like how do we it's not we can't reward every diehard found north fan with a bottle of totally. 7s but for the love of god let's try to make it get into the hands of people who are actually going to drink it and actually yeah. care about the brand um and that's hard. We we don't know the solution. I couldn't imagine a way to do that. And we don't know the solution for the next high altitude collection, but we're we're thinking about that. Right. I mean, we're really thinking about that. Uh it mm-hmm. leads me into a question from a good friend of the podcast, Max. Got a coaster over here from Max <laughs> here. So uh yeah, he uh was curious if your business, Found North, has ever entertained the option of a subscription model. I know it's a little iffy, but like yeah. people have been doing this lately, and I was curious okay, what you guys been, thought about it. That's 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 a conversation that's on the table right now. Um mm-hmm. I'm I'm 
I get it, right? Like, I totally get it. I get, I get why, I get why brands do it, and I like, and I, and I get the concept. Um, particularly having worked, look, I, I, I worked in retail where the amount of, you know, regular product A that you sold got you the allocation product B from brands, yeah. right? Right. Um, and therefore, I was also part of the process of like, okay, how do we reward the customer that is driving our allocations, yeah. you know? And that was a tough, that's a tough thing to figure out. And we ended up, when I was working retail, we ended up creating a lottery system and you, you know, it was, you got more lottery tickets, the more you spent at our store. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, I, I like that system. And I, and so I understand the, the concept of a subscription basically being like, look, if you're going to buy into found North, we're going to reward you. And I, and I get that the, the thing I, the piece I don't like about it is I don't love I don't love the pay to play aspect of it. You know, I don't love the idea of you have to buy a certain amount of found north to get a certain yeah. amount of found north. You not be just able because to have a chance. Not, uh, yeah, exactly. And not just because like not just because uh I, I don't like the money aspect of it. That's a piece of it. And that's naive of me, right? I run a business. I should be cognizant of the money aspect of it. And, and I am, and I try to be, but also the idea that, um, uh, that the idea that you had to know about us to get the cool things. That's a good point. Like, yeah, I have, I have an enormous amount of affection for the people who um, have evangelized Found North from mm -hmm. the very beginning, particularly because <laughs> if I walked into a room full of a bunch of whiskey drinkers a and rum. I had a 20 a rum, <laughs> a rum. Yeah, there you go. If I walked go into ahead. a rum, a rum <laughs> of 25 really serious whiskey drinkers yeah. and I had a 30 year old single malt scotch and I said hey this is a great whiskey nobody's going to roll their eyes at me I'm not going out on a limb right they're yeah. going to trust that it's good because it's 30 year old single malt scotch yeah. every single customer of Found North who brought a bottle of batch one or batch two into yeah. a room full of bourbon drinkers and was like I have a fucking Canadian whiskey that you're going to love yeah, had to had to have some kinda, balls. Yeah, yeah, had to put their neck out. Had for to stand Found behind North. it. Yeah, had to stand behind it. And so mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to like. There's a little bit of a balance here where it's like yeah. I really do want to honor the people who ha who who were early arrivals to Found North and did that because it yeah. it it makes the brand. That's the other thing. That's the other thing that I care a lot about. And and I think our experience as whiskey makers sort of being on the sales side and being on the retail side is you kind of learn the value of customers in a way that I think brands that are very removed from the sale directly to the consumer don't quite get. What mm. I mean by that is like, if I am big distillery in the USA, <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I meant AS in the letter A, but the US sounds like I forgot America. Um, <laughs> if, if I am in, you know, big distillery of US of A, um, then and like, and I make whiskey, you're actually incredibly removed from the consumer. You sell it by the pallet to your distributors who are right. in all of the different states. They mm -hmm. sell it to the retailers who then sell it to the consumer. You're so far removed from the customer. I don't blame big distilleries or small distilleries for that matter um, for, for not fully appreciating how important the customer is to building the brand. And I don't just mean that in the term yeah. in terms of like buying <laughs> the product. I mean that in terms of like, 
whiskey drinkers gossip, baby. We are serious yeah. about like when we find a whiskey that we really love that's new, we want to bring it to the party and show it off to our friends. Totally. Like, and and so if that's why my batch don't... eight ran out in like two weeks. <laughs> right. yeah. If you don't appreciate the customer uh, uh, who's bringing your bottle to the party and Important. being like, yo, this is a brand I believe in and this is a product that I love, then <clears throat> you don't get how your whiskey is sold. Seriously. Yeah. I, I think, and I, and I just think that like so many people are really far removed from that who make whiskey. And having worked as a spirits buyer who had to hand sell whiskey like i i i actually had the privilege of of being really direct with our customers and the rest of our team actually all was the same so hmm. our team is made up of my brother who was a brand ambassador when we started tnt sammy hmm. who was the brand ambassador for edrington so highland park and mccallan wow. and a bartender Phil, nice. who was the spirits buyer at a store in, in Cambridge called uh, Porter Square Fine Wine Spirits. Chris, nice. who was the brand ambassador for Gordon and McPhail, and oh, then wow. the commercial director for Westland and Barrel. And me, who was a spirits buyer at Gordon's before becoming a brand ambassador. We, we are a team that has been incredibly close to the customer, yeah. not far away from the customer. And I don't know that there's a team in this business who is more aware of the importance of every single customer. And I remember I've talked to other people in the business. I answer every single customer email that I get. That's I answer great. every single one. You will not find someone going, oh, no, those assholes have found North didn't answer my email. <laughs> I answer them. I get up on Saturday and Saturday morning is usually when I crush That's emails cool. from customers. Um and, P and I will write for an hour to a single email. Somebody will say, That's hey, great. why did you do this? And I will write these like soliloquies. Uh -oh. like, this is what we were thinking. This is why. And I have had people in the business be like, you are wasting your time. Yeah. Right? And their thought behind that is that's one customer buying one bottle. That's it. Or two yeah. bottles or three bottles. That's it. Right? Like, And they make a good point. For, for me to sell thousands of cases of found north i probably can't sell one bottle every hour i actually have to sell more whiskey than that right yeah but but the reality is that this this business is actually driven by the tiny percentage of whiskey consumers who care so yeah. so deeply about yeah. whiskey and anybody who are willing who's to willing, write in, yeah. Anybody who who sits there and goes, "I love this company," or "I'm interested in this company," and I really want to know this one thing enough that they go to our website or they've yeah. been on your podcast or whatever, and they've heard mm -hmm. me say, "Email me at nick at foundnorthwhiskey dot com," mm -hmm. and they go, yeah. "You know what? Fine, fuck it. I'm going to email that guy." Yeah. And they sit down and they email me. Any of those people? Those are the type of people who grab a bottle of Found North Batch Eight. And show it off to fifty other people. Yeah, like them. absolutely. Exactly. So, and then those people like, believe them. Totally. So, yeah. like, I love these people, and I really want to find a way to reward these people. But That's at cool. the same time, if you're like not quite as early to the party as those people, I don't want you to not have a shot at our best whiskeys. And so, I just I haven't figured out, and we as a team haven't figured out, like. How do we handle these really cool, super, super limited products that we make? How do we handle it in a way that it doesn't just favor the people who spend the most money with us? It doesn't just favor the people who are the earliest people to found North, but yeah. does acknowledge the value that those people have brought to the brand. And I, yeah, I don't know how cool. to do that. Maybe it's some sort of subscription model. So maybe it's some some piece of this. We We... To answer after like 30 minutes on my soapbox, to answer <laughs> that good. person's question, um, we care a lot about this question and we think a lot about it and we definitely mm -hmm. are considering a subscription model. We don't know if it's the best way to do it, but you, you, you bet your ass we think about it and we don't think about it just because we care about making the most money we can off of people. We think about it because we really, really, really deeply care about the people who have bought into Found North. Yeah. And you, you want to reach 
the widest amount of people possible. You want to reach the people who deserve it the most. And, you know, a, subs a subscription model may only a reward the people who are willing to spend X dollars X yeah. Y frequently. Mm -hmm, right. you, you know what I mean? So that's so, the, yeah. yeah. So that's I get the it. given, that's the give and take, right? That's the given. Yeah. And, and I, it, it kills me. And I love it when people email me and are like, um, you know, I got this bottle, you know, my dad loved found North batch two, and I got him a bottle of batch of, of, sorry, of, of Peregrine. And like, it's his yeah. favorite whiskey. Thank you. Awesome. You know what I mean? Awesome. And you're just That's like, awesome. yeah. You're like, ah. and I don't care that that, whether or not that guy's bought, you know, 17 other things like exactly that. And I don't want to lose that. You know, I don't want to lose found North supposed to be a special whiskey for people. Like, yeah. I, I want people to, I want people to drink our whiskey. My brother will kill me if I'm like, save our whiskey. I don't want people to, uh, to grab our whiskey and put it on a shelf and mm, look at it. I do. Yeah. I really care that people open it and drink it. We made it to be drunk. Um, yeah. But at the same time, like I do want it to, to have a, a place in, in, yeah. I want it to have a place in people's whiskey hearts. You know, I want people mm, to yeah. sit there and be like, I, 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 I have poured whiskeys at a lot of my best friends' uh, weddings or for their first kids. You that's know, cool. like that's a special thing, right? Yeah. yeah. I want that's that's the whiskey I want to be. You had a, yeah. You had right, a right, forty like, year Gordon McPhail for your brother's wedding. Has, that's has right. that happened yet? Is that is hasn't still happened yet? There? Okay. I have Dude. it. It's right. It's on the other side of this. Found North thing. It's a <laughs> I love that. Year old Glenn Berge. It's a Ooh. 1966, 2012 vintage, 46 year old Glenn Berge. And it's one of the Glenn best Berge. fucking wow. whiskeys I've ever had. And I've been sitting on it for 10 years, waiting, waiting to open it for him. It's the longest. Once he I've gets ever a fine girl. <laughs> Yeah, he has a fine girl. They just, Lock it down. Just a man. Put a ring on it for the Lock, sake of the whiskey. A busy man. He is a busy <sighs> man. And I don't know that they actually want to have a wedding. So that that's oh. also, but you know what? Bring it to it's the courthouse just for the whiskey. <laughs> I'll bring it to the courthouse. <laughs> I'll bring it to the courthouse. Or maybe yeah. I'll just, maybe he'll just turn 40 and I'll crack it. That's also, <laughs> that's also available to us. Love that's it, awesome. Love it. I know, uh, uh, obviously we've run insanely long here, uh, and there are Instagram questions that got writ written in that we're not going to get to. I'm so sorry. No, no. Everybody. Hit me with we the Q. So I, I, if you, if you're wondering if I have the stamina, I'll be quicker. I can fat rapid fire. No, no. Fire uh, one questions. of them was, uh, how'd you pick up Chris Riesbach? Oh, 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 people know. Yeah. Chris. One person reached out about that. Yeah. Embellish Chris? pod, embellish podcast. Yeah. Shout oh, out to John oh, yeah. Hughes. Oh, hell yeah. Um, yeah, thank you, John. That's a great question. Uh, Chris is Chris is the closest thing I have to a mentor. That's um, cool. Chris Chris was the was the brand ambassador for Gordon McPhail when I was one of the best Gordon McPhail accounts in the country oh, cool. when I was a, when I was a spirit buyer because Gordon McPhail is my jam when it comes to scotch. Um, oh yeah, and uh, they put and, together and, some and, great things. And so Chris and I have known each other for ten years. That's um, cool. And, uh, we've been, we've been, uh, uh, he's, he has given us guidance and been apprised of what we've been doing for the entire existence of Zach and my business. And finally he was like, oh, fuck it. I got to get on board with this. And, and so yeah. Cool. With us. yeah, yeah. Which yeah, is, he was which is barrel uh, awesome. for a while, if I'm not wrong, he was a barrel. He was at Westland. Um, yeah, he's, he was the youngest keeper of the Quaith ever. Um, what's that tell really me all cool. about it okay becoming a keeper is you have to have at least i think it's at least five years um in the scotch industry and you have okay. to have made a marked impact on evangelizing scotch whiskey That's great. Uh, mm -hmm. it is oh. it is yeah Good it's given Chris. it's yeah pretty cool chris so is the man and what's he been up to well. for out found north what's he been doing for you guys what he got hired to do and what he's doing for us are a little different. Um, I, I think Chris, Chris, uh, Chris has, has come on to, to do, um, a ton of the commercial work for us, um, which can be as kind of mundane sounding, although it's really interesting as, um, opening our markets and managing our, our, um, our distribution partners, um, also 
like he he is an absolute wizard on just marketing and designing some of the he he and I have been working on a really really cool barrel program idea that we have for single barrels um mm. but uh yeah oh, chris ask chris is that. <laughs> yeah chris is the man um yes let's talk about that and yes the answer is yes um Ooh, and love uh, it. <laughs> and uh so so he's been doing that but chris chris is harriet watt trained um and one of the most connected people in the industry. Yeah. Um, so he has had his fingers in a lot of pie, not to mention he has a fucking fabulous palette. Um, yeah, so cool. Chris, Chris has been, Chris has been helping us a lot with um, a lot of other pieces of the business where we've just roped him in and been like, Hey, what do you, you know, what's your experience on this? What do you think of this? What is this? And, and honestly, that's, we're kind of like that. at found North somebody, um, my wife is in business school and she asked me all the time. She's like, all right. So like, how would you break down what each of your jobs are? You know? And I'm like, all right, well I do this. And she's like, okay, so that's like product development. And I'm like, and this, and she's like, oh, so that's some marketing. And I'm like, and I write this. And she's like, and then you're your copy editor. And then I do this. And then you, your spokesperson, what does your brother do? And it's like, Oh, he does this. She's like, Oh, he's your CEO. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also he does all of our like supply announcements. She's like, Oh, he's your COO. It's like, yeah, he is. But also like he does our financial modeling. He's like, so he's also your CFO. <laughs> the like, C-suite embodied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like that's yeah. how Found North works. Everybody, it's that's like great. Sammy does a ton of product development and is our chief designer, and then Phil literally does everything. If yeah. there's a job that needs to get done that none of us Phil know how to in. do, Phil does it. Yeah, <laughs> literally fills it in. His <laughs> his name, by the way, is Phil Meehan. His name is Phil Meehan. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's great it's awesome that's perfect yeah, and he right fills in it. for everything we need it's amazing nice. that's awesome. that's perfect. uh well if i'm gonna keep rolling on these so uh, oh, hit me yeah Let's we heard it on, Insta- single on barrels. instagram from uh <laughs> the harmony guy coach garwood they were all asking oh, when right. the next, next batch coming out is mm-hmm. but mad town marketer ben klepsig we love him so much he different take on the same question what is in the works that you're most excited about is there any yeah. weird off thing yeah, that you're you like i a cannot few already wait? that are in the oh. <laughs> i'll bleep it out yeah that's i gotta write that down oh that's funny um uh uh <laughs> we got him <laughs> damn it three hours in and i finally yeah no, uh, the next yeah, right at the, the next... end too the next high altitude collection is the thing yep. I'm most excited about releasing. Um, that being said, high altitude collection is not just going to be two whiskeys. Um, there, Ooh. there will be more whiskeys than that. And we've, we've already made not, it's not finished. We've made the initial blend for the, the third member of the high altitude collection. Awesome. And we have a concept behind it. We we're just starting to get it into its secondary maturation, um, and good God, I'm excited about this whiskey. Ooh. I mean, I am really excited about this whiskey. Also, um, we've made so with our single barrels. We do I'm talking about single barrels. We do seasons. So a season is the That's initial cool. blend. So if we do a season of single barrels, if we do a season of single barrels, it'll be like season one was a blend of. Um, 12 year old rye, 19 year old rye, and 21 year old corn. Mm-hmm. We then took all of those and all of that liquid and put it into 18 barrels. Those 18 barrels are season one, barrel one, season one, barrel two, season, right? You get the idea. Yep. Yeah. The next season was a corn season. We blended together a bunch of different uh, components. It was 66% corn, 30% rye, 4% malted barley. And those what was it 16 barrels or whatever it was that's a season right um Mm -hmm. so season four i'm really excited about but actually we've already made season five as well oh wow we haven't we've come up with a concept for season five um where the in the past what we've done with seasons it's just been like wow that's a good barrel let's put it in that oh that's a good barrel let's put it in that right it's there's Mm -hmm. no rhyme rhyme or reason to it it's just like 
that barrel is quality and we're going to cool. put this liquid in here Honey and we barrels. think it'll yeah, do well yeah. right mm -hmm. um season five is not like that at all season five oh, cool. is like we had a a, a a real intention behind exactly what the barrels would be and why Mm, and ooh. they're all different from each other. Every single one is different, which Love is good for us. Every and it's much more because we've gotten bigger. Um, but it's one of those things where it will literally be impossible to collect them all. The only collection of all of them will be in my basement. Uh, I love it. But but it's going to be one of those things where it's like wow, barrel 6, I love this because they did this this and barrel mm -hmm. 8 is the same sort of profile but they did it this way and i i think that i don't want to i don't want to let the cat out of the bag because we're going to do a big reveal on it but the way we did season five i am just absolutely stoked that's gonna that's be cool. cool yeah that's real we cool. want a part of season six or whatever no, you want a part or of five? season three four or five yeah <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a we lot of part of that actually cole wants to the... sold out but four and five nice no cool. i mean Actually, like we want to be a part of the future of these uh ones <laughs> the uh <laughs> high rye contribution is what cole wants to be a part of <laughs> yeah. i'll take anything man these are yeah. great things. oh yeah for sure um so we uh also had a write-in from uh, a, a person i'm just gonna name moose like a cow moo so moo says is there any plan for like an it just insanely overfinished a cigar blend found north cigar blend cognac armagnac all the finishes cigar blend oh like literally like 15 different blend uh, 15 well, different finishing types or like not necessarily the shit out of it yeah just something that is like heavily finished you know like joseph magnus cigar blend it's got yeah. armagnac and yeah, cognac yeah, yeah, and yeah. cherry and yeah mm -hmm. if we could do it well not not in the near future, but we would definitely yeah. do it if we could do it well. All right. So next question that we had, uh, very personal question. So uh, Jim Mathwig, my father-in-law, by the way, nice. uh, curious on your take of when you taste things at like a distillery versus when you taste things at home. He recently had an experience where he tasted something at a distillery. I won't name the distillery, but it was in love with it, it at the distillery. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so he gets home and he buys a bottle and he's like, this tastes nothing like I've ever had before. And the, the curiosity here is... Way. Could there possibly be anything with the dis with the distribution aspect to like make it change just a little bit more, or do you think it's all, all right, emotional? This is a great question. Oh no, I, I I this is a great question, and and I I think um I I wanna I wanna hedge and be like yeah, there could be something about the blah blah blah, and I could I could give them something that would make them feel a little bit better about the purchase, but it's nonsense. It's all about the emotion uh i, I used Makes to sense. and i used to say this i used to say this about like um you have to be really careful when you drink a whiskey with the person who made it it will taste it'll taste two That's points real. two full points on the 10 point scale better drinking it with the person who made it um and i had this experience as a buyer um i went to I went to Whiskey Fest 2014 in New York when I was a, when I was working in retail, and I met the maker of a, a new bourbon brand at the time. And uh, the man was like a total whiskey legend, and he tasted me on his new product, and I was going through it, and I was like completely enamored with it. And I went back to Boston. And I went to my room. No, um, and I and I and, I was, and you packed your cat, <laughs> and I packed my cat, and <laughs> no, and I um, I ended up like reaching out to the distributor. I bought the whiskey. I set up a tasting for all of my best customers. Oh, rough. And I poured the whiskey, and people were like, "Yeah, this one's not very good," you know. And I was like, "What? This one's great. What are they talking about?" And I poured the next one. And they're like, eh, "Okay." You know? And I was like, something's wrong. Oh, no. And I literally poured the whiskeys and I was like, these are bad. Oh, no. <laughs> these are like, bad. And I was like, I don't know what happened. And I literally remember I was new new to the, I, I my first reaction was like, maybe something happened to some these crap. bottles. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. 
And I ended up going through the whole rigmarole of being like, I think you guys sent me bad bottles. And they were like, okay. And they sent their, the distributor rep came with, um, with their own like samples from their office, wow. you know, cause like any distributor has it and they brought it in and we tasted them side by side and they were identical. Oh, wow. Um, it was like, and I was just like, what the hell? What have I done? And that was when I, that was when I first, that was totally when I first learned like, interesting. It, it, that's the perfect I, it answer. A, it gave me an appreciation though, because um it's not necessarily a bad thing. Like mm-hmm. the be- one of the best whiskeys I've ever had was um I was at the Glen Morangy distillery um with Brendan McCarran, who's the f- gonna be Bill he's Bill Lumsden's uh you know heir apparent to take over as master distiller if Bill ever decides to retire. Hmm. Um and uh and he and i were walking through the warehouse and we got to one the front of the one of the warehouses and obviously some barrels had been pulled aside and there was a 1989 which is my birth year and i was looking at it and i was like i was like brendan what like that's my birth year what is that and he's like he's got a scottish eye you know he's got a thick um He's got a Glasgow accent. He's got like mm. like a like. There's like an Edinburgh accent. If you ever get really into Scott, like Edinburgh is like the Oxford accent of Scottish. Uh, yeah, but do they say tour whatever. or tour? <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> but <laughs> Glasgow is like the bastardized like Irish, yeah. like because Glasgow is when you know the Irish is the Irish famine, and it's it's basically half Irish. It's why they make triple distilled whiskey in the in the oh in, wow yeah. in and around. Uh, the southern parts of of scotland but mm. uh but he's got like a thick accent he's like oh yeah i don't know you know he's like, i can't even imitate it. He's like, i don't know what that is you know he's like some bill's working on you know and uh-huh. and i was like i was like can we crack it open and he's yeah. like yeah why not you know <laughs> i swear to god he grabs a he grabs a beaker off of uh-huh. the windowsill that's got like cobwebs in it you know (laughs) he's got a like like a traditional scottish you know distillery worker he's literally got a thief in his leg you know he pulls out Uh, pulling out of his sock hammers it out takes his like 500 mls and puts it in the beaker oh wow and he and i are sitting there i probably shouldn't tell the story he and i are sitting there (laughs) and we are we're drinking from this from this barrel yeah Um, and we're just and i'm like this is incredible. You know, he and I are like, this is absolutely, both of us are like, this is incredible. We drink like three shots each off of this dusty yeah. old beaker. And he goes, you're done with it. And I'm like, yeah. And he dumps it right back in the <laughs> fucking barrel. Hammers <laughs> the bunk closed. <laughs> it was the... Tw- it was the 27 year that was released in 2016. It was the oh, 27 wow. year that won everything oh, it was wow. one of like the most cool. awarded whiskeys and was that whiskey that good yes in this instance it turned out yeah. to be that good. yeah right right but the fact that it was there the way we yeah. drank it like that made the experience of drinking it 10 times better i mean it mm. was i still is it in a vacuum one of the best whiskeys i've ever had maybe was it one mm. of the best whiskey drinking experiences i've ever had Without a doubt, it was one of the most fun whiskey drinking experiences I've ever had. That's Every cool. aspect of it was awesome. And so, like, is it a bad thing that when you drink it at the distillery or with the person who made it, that that gives it a boost? No. Does that mean you got duped? No. It just means mm-hmm. you had a great whiskey drinking experience. Exactly. Yeah, but, that's point. but you should know in your back pocket that it might not be as good the second when time you around drink it when without that experience. When you drink it at home yeah. in the garage. Yeah. You know? yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> that's a good answer. No, I appreciate that. <laughs> Floki Icelandic sheep dung smoke whiskey might have tasted a little better in Iceland than after I got yeah. it. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's, that's uh, so lastly, here we got a uh, question from Bro Aska Testwasa. Ah, yeah. Canadian turtle friend. <laughs> I've uh, practiced many a months on saying that name correctly. He still uh, gets me, and I've been on this show for as long as he's been a listener. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, any updates on the possibility of Canadian distribution? How are you guys looking Ooh. on distribution to maybe outside the United States? Anything like that? Canada's 
probably the hardest of all the countries that are oh, interested really? in getting our product believe oh, it or wow. not the, the 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 sick irony of this whole thing yeah um here's the deal and i'm not going to try to repeat what you just said that person's name was bro um, just call him bro <laughs> bro here's the deal bro. no i sound no i sound like 19 year old version of myself i don't like it um, <laughs> no i i i here's the deal some of the components that were aging like the stuff that we made for batch eight that was in the madeira cask is in the u.s okay so why is that a problem because i have an importing license we oh. have an importing license into the u.s so I can import Canadian whiskey and blend it with the stuff that I have in the U.S. then it's US. officially American whiskey, basically. And then it, no, no, but then it's, oh, like, okay. I can then immediately sell it to a distributor. Mm -hmm. If I want to sell the exact same whiskey to Canada, I have to bring it into the U.S., blend it, mm -hmm. get an importer in Canada, yeah. export it back to yeah, Canada. right pay all the taxes yeah twice then they put it through there yeah exactly and so like the one of the big problems isn't just that it's a pain in the ass to sell stuff in canada which anybody in canada knows like it's like selling into a control into a control state right so uh, if you're familiar with the liquor industry in the u.s um a portion of the states are run by a portion of the liquor stores in certain states. If you're in Pennsylvania, it's one Virginia, of the Virginia, mm -hmm. North Carolina. Um, basically, it's all state run and it makes it much, much harder to get. Sometimes it makes it much, much harder to get your product into that state. Canada's mm -hmm. like that. But on top of it, if we were to sell batch eight in Canada the way we made it this time around, we would have to sell it for way, way more just to break oh. even. Mm -hmm. And that is not something that we really want to do. Like yeah. it's annoying enough for Canadians that they can't get the whiskey, but imagine if they got the whiskey and the same stuff cost twice as much. Right. Like yeah. it would just be such a, now I'm exaggerating, but it would, it, it would not be ideal. Um, and so there are solutions and we're working on them and we've been working on them and, to all our Canadian fans of our Canadian whiskey, um, I am deeply sorry that we haven't solved this problem yet. I beg your patience. We are working on it. I don't know if what, I, what we might do is like, there's got to be a solution for us where anything where we're, we, we don't have any of the components. Because like some of the stuff we've made, all of the components are actually aging in Canada. So oh, cool. in theory we could get a partner in Canada who'd be willing to co-pack it to like mm. literally bottle and label it for us and then have the license to sell it just direct, right? So yeah. then we wouldn't actually ever have to have it leave the country and therefore we could get around it. But some of the stuff that we're doing, like the high altitude collection, all of that's aging in our warehouses is in the US. So yeah. like, how do we, how do we get it back there without, with with us actually like literally making some money on it and not mm -hmm. getting gouged yeah and and not sorry and not gouging the customer it it's, yeah, it's a sure. tricky it's actually trickier than you would think and we're very 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 unusual company we may be the only company that we, we might be the only company that's importing Canadian whiskey here and then wanting mm -hmm. to export it back to Canada. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Any yeah. Uh, updates on U.S. distribution? Have you guys expanded many states in the last couple of months or anything like yeah. that? We're expanding. We've expanded into Louisiana, Missouri. Nice. Um, cool. We we've we last year we expanded into um, we we signed up with Prestige, which is a really cool distributor in. Um, Maryland, DC, Delaware. Oh, cool. um, our main goal from a distribution standpoint is for the first goal for us is access, which is ironic because I just gave this whole speech on why we are not available in Canada. Inaccessibility. <laughs> right, inaccessibility. Um, but but we really do care about access. And a, there's very interesting rules on shipping in the US. Some states allow it, some don't. Um, and so we've actually focused on trying to get distribution in the states that are really strict about not allowing shipping into their states. Um, our goal is to be available either direct to consumer through 
e-commerce platforms like Barcart, Sealbox, Sharepore, or to actually have distribution in those states. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, we have our eyes on Tennessee. Um, that's one of the reasons we went into Illinois and Alaska so early, which is hilarious. Oh, wow. We have great distribution in Alaska. Alaska has done multiple amazing single barrels of found north nice. in case wow. anybody is in case anybody from alaska is listening uh three mm -hmm. bears uh, the grocer has an that's great unbelievably good single barrel which is oh, just dang. hilarious to me that's uh, that in your, yeah no you have that in your basement <laughs> oh yeah he's got them all I in his basement baby basement. <laughs> <laughs> i got every i got everything you can think of in the basement man that's so great. great the 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 stash, the secret stash of of uh, Second Summit is in my basement. No, uh, oh. I, 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 the the last of batch two is in my basement. Uh, I'm gonna get fucking uh, robbed. I should stop saying this. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty casual about where I live. Yeah. Maybe I well, okay, look, <laughs> if a chill filtered listener robs you, the pool is, uh, you know, yeah. we can yeah, find yeah, it. Yeah, we yeah, can yeah, find yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. right, cool. So that's it. Instagram write ins. That was it. This was episode you guys have 300. Any, you guys got any questions left? We've got you know, three hours for episode 300. I mean, basically, we could talk after, or we can talk before. We want to do a single barrel pick ourselves. So good. Yeah. I'll introduce you to Chris. Chris Perfect. runs our single barrel program. We'll now. Talk to Let's Chris. get it going. I can you uh, just maybe take a couple minutes and say what is what is the experience like? Uh, we come yeah. there, we sip things, we blend things. It takes two days. <laughs> we've done stuff like that um yeah. but we're honestly like a little bit trying to get away from it because it's so mm. labor intensive totally. um and we're we're streamlining it a little bit with uh we're, we're definitely going to try to streamline it with accounts um mm. so if you're a liquor store like reach out to us we want to do a single barrel with you so you want to do a single barrel with us we want to do a single barrel with you i'm not flying out there sorry like <laughs> You yeah. know, I, I'm not. I'm not going to go meet one person one on one to to pick through a couple barrels. Um, Phoenix you're going to get nice shipped in like you're going to get shipped a couple right. sam samples and and let's go. That's it. That's it. Um, that being said, when we do club picks or like um, when we've done on YouTube, it's it's a or a podcast perhaps. Um, it's a it's a totally different. It's a totally different game because I, I I actually like to send you the samples. If you have people you want to be part of the picking process, like let's wrap them in. Um, mm. And I love 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 to do it as a live stream or a podcast or anything like That's that. Cool. Yeah, I like totally to join. Um, I like to join in, taste with you. Try not to lead the 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 witness in You're any like way, shape, one. or form. Um, <laughs> yeah, you, 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 this one. This Trust one. Me, right? um, <laughs> Yeah, but but I but but that's a different for me. Like the single barrels, the single barrels are really about two things in my in my opinion. On one hand, particularly with accounts, like we understand how important single barrels are to the business of accounts who need to find interesting, cool products to sell to their customers, and we really mm -hmm. appreciate it if you want to do a Found North one. Uh, and so we particularly like to reward accounts that have been with Found North for a long time. Um, that or or you know are are gung ho about Found North. Like, yeah, podcasts sure, who have cool. done you know like cool. three interview episodes of Found North. Yeah, three yeah. and four yeah. total yeah. episodes. <laughs> but but on the on the on the flip side, um, uh, like clubs, I, I'll tell when clubs reach out to me, I'm like, sure, but I want to set up a, a an event around it. You know, mm -hmm. and I'll fly out. I mean, I literally oh, flew cool. to Denver a month ago I to do that. I saw that. I don't. I can't remember yeah. if it was Reddit or what, but yeah, I saw. Oh, it was were... awesome. Yeah. yeah, and these these guys That's reached cool. out to me. They wanted to do an event. They were diehard Found North fans. They wanted nice. to pick a single barrel, and they're like, you know, would you want to do this? And I was like, yeah. Also, I want to come. You know, like nice. let's go. Oh, yeah. I, I want to no, be there. Let's have a good time. Um, because in those instances, it's it's much more about the experience of getting introduced to the brand. Uh, mm -hmm. and so that, that's kind of the way that, that I think about it at least. And that's how we're trying to, to, to sort of, um, home in on the, uh, meet up party, awesome. Brian. Yeah. Oh, Just, it's all coming together. It's all yes. coming Let's together. go. Let's go. <laughs> We've been talking about awesome. a chill filtered meetup forever. And this would be the perfect example. Yes. And we've Let's been thinking go. about Phoenix, Arizona. I don't know how you like the warm weather. 
Yeah. I do like the warm weather. Perk. Although uh, my uh, upcoming Actually, first I like hot and dry a lot. Upcoming nice. first child That's what we is got. My, what we had my excuse to not have to travel, and upcoming first children may have excuses mm. not to travel. So I don't know. We'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Phoenix great. sounds fun. I'm in. <laughs> Let's do it. Dude, I'll, Phoenix I'll fly in, out there. Phoenix yeah. in February. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh my Phoenix goodness. in February. It's unbeatable. Man. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. My right. um that's it. Yeah, you know what? Let's be done. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's go. <laughs> all right, we'll close it up. But uh Nick, thank you so much. Um, this was even better than I expected, and I was hoping for very great things from this. So thank you. Thanks for guiding us through. Thanks for uh, sharing the new release upcoming for with us. Uh, we're grateful to have you. And most of all, like I think thank you for being so easy to talk to. Um, oh man, it's easy to just like go three plus hours with you <laughs> and talking so uh, we'll take you anytime you want to you want to show something off and we'll badger you about it until you uh, if, if yes. you don't want to so uh i hope everyone had a good time any last uh, things to say nick about how to find your newest oh, batches geez. coming up or anything like that I, i'm such a moron to do this at hour three and a half is just <laughs> I'm such a good spokesperson and such a bad salesman of our product. No, uh, uh, you know, the 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 most important thing with Found North is to be on our mailing list. Um, we Ooh. communicate everything through our mailing list. If you go to foundnorthwhiskey.com on literally any of the pages and you scroll to the bottom, there's a sign up for the mailing list. Um, if you can't figure it out, email me at nick at yeah. foundnorthwhiskey.com or team at whiskey, you know, literally like mm. team at founders at nick at we'll we'll nice. we'll take care of you. Um and and actually, seriously, I wasn't joking earlier. Like I, I it's amazing how often people email me or they email us at founders and then I email yeah. back and it's like signed Nick, and they're like, wait. I saw you on a podcast. Like that <laughs> like is Nick, actually Nick? you. We got to reach out like, to you. So like, who the hell else do you think is going to answer the email? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Not that big. <laughs> like, yeah. like, um, no, but, but, but email me, uh, particularly if you have questions or, or hell, even if you're just like, Hey, I'm new to found North and I'm looking for a bottle. I live in state X. Do you know where That's I can cool. find it? I will try to help you. Um, I I've, I've helped people find bottles and, and, uh, I really love it. I like when people, I like when people, yeah, I know, I have, mm -hmm. shit. I helped Brian the other day. Um, yeah. we love, we love, love, love making whiskey. But one of the main reasons we love making whiskey is because it allows us to connect with people. So like the whiskey is the conduit for you and me to have a conversation. So shoot me an email. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely respond. Oops. No, that sounds great. And, uh, listeners, I hope you do. And I hope everyone had a good time. I think this is officially our longest episode ever. And I hope you were able to hang in there with us because it was fun the whole time. It but most fun. of all, listeners, <laughs> I hope that our love of whiskey lifted your spirits. This thing is so fat. It's just a fatty, yeah. fat, fat whiskey. And that's what I love about it.